I feel like you guys want to watch them both and be in both chats. Hello! I like to keep an eye on Fufu's chat as best I can. I'm not great at watching chat. I I have both chats open as well on the screen. Yes. Um, You're all, you're often responding to my chat before I am. (laughs) Sometimes. (laughs) Uh, Echo. Sometimes, yes. Yeah, that's Um, my thing. How's it going, buddy? Good, good. How about you? How's your week? It is, it's it's going. (laughs) It's busy, I know. Busy, I know. (laughs) Yeah, let's Uh, let's go with that. But yeah, no, it's going. Um, Yeah, it's good to be back. It's been a little while. It has been, yeah. You've been traveling, I know. I know, I have, I have. It's been like a couple weeks of travel because I've been in Scotland Mm. and then at ShadyQ and all that stuff. Yep. But that's awesome. And I personally don't mind taking off some time to play some other stuff while we wait to finish this up. Yeah, of course. I'm sure the, the folks at home don't mind. They're happy as long as we're here playing video games, right? Yeah, yeah, exactly. exactly. <laughs> What's up, guys? Am I right, guys? Hey, everybody. What's up, Black Lace Chat, by the way? I like, Hello. I like to think so. Yeah. Say hi to Fufu, guys. Hello, Yo. Kung Fu's chat. Hello. Hey, guys, this is episode 10 of SideQuest Cafe. It's pretty awesome. It is. We finally hit a solid 10. I'm excited That's about a, yeah, that. we're we're in double digits. That's a celebration. We are in double digits. That's exciting. <laughs> yeah. That's pretty sweet, and uh, and it's actually it's ending up it's ending up pretty perfectly. We're just wrapping up our third game, right? Is the third? I'm sorry, fourth game, right? We started with Is fifteen. Our... We also did seven, and we've done Persona. Did we do anything why else? Did I th- why did I think that we started with Setsuna? No, that was like last summer. We started with 15, Final Fantasy 15. I'm tripping, we were, you're right. Yeah, I think I'm I think that Setsuna's, that yeah. I think Setsuna started the conversation oh, that's about probably, this show. Yeah, that's probably what that was. That makes sense. I think I think that's what it is. Yeah. Uh, also, boys and girls, uh, let me know. I feel like my music's a little loud compared to Kung Fu. Let me know if if she's hard to hear. Oh, same um, yeah, let me know if the music's okay for you guys. Yeah, my, my voice is probably fine because it's using my OBS settings, but Fufu might not be. Okay. Your okay. sprites are missing. Oh no, they are. Uh oh. I I like never added my sprites actually. Oh really? I, I think I know where they are though. Oh, you also have the one that's pointed at me. <laughs> my sprite. <laughs> I gotta give you a different version. <laughs> you have. Oh there, yeah, yeah. That's the okay though. Hand. That's okay. Mm, just whatever. <laughs> that's all right. That's all right. Hi, um, man. Uh oh, I was just trying. I'm sorry. I was trying to pop out your chat. For some reason, you can't pop out chat from multi-stream. I don't know why. It doesn't seem to be an option. Oh, that's silly. I use, Unless I'm just missing it. I typically use speedrun.tv, actually, when I watch multi-streams. Speedrun.tv, okay. Yeah, okay. because you can link your Twitch account and then get your follower list right from there, which is really easy, and then it That's pretty nice, you know, I, I, yeah. I definitely have a preference for multi-stream. That's because a friend of mine built it. I don't know if it's still cool. like the best tool out okay. there. Okay, okay, that's cool, um, that makes sense. But it's, it's KB Mod multi-stream. I used to be a part of KB Mod. And yeah, okay. when it first came out, like everybody was praising it and the technology that went into it. I don't know if there's better stuff out now. Yeah, um, I got you. It it's, is hot it's here today. It's hot everywhere. I think it's hot actually everywhere. Let's it's finally good. get to that point because it's been like really mild so far here. Yeah. It's been like super like cool and not not quite rainy, which is nice. It's a nice break from the rain, but yeah. Um, but still. Yo, today I am sweating. Yo, lucky I, I don't know you about though you. that uh, it took until today <laughs> for you to get this hot. Yeah, we have had hot moments before, but overall it's been like pretty mild. It doesn't like yeah. stay hot. No, it's pretty um, hot here. My apartment's having it's chugging along to try to stay cool. Oh, and you're you're in Virginia too, right? Yeah, oh, I get so humid, hot there. It's hot. And, yeah. Uh, you know that's mm. why I woke up at 7 a.m. this morning, which is not <laughs> normal. It's for unreal. Me. Yeah, I woke up at 7 a.m. So, so we could go blueberry picking because they were going to close at 1 due to high heat oh. circumstances. So like, Wow, we, really? Yeah, so we just were like, I'm going to suck it up, wake up early, and we'll go while it's still like not blazingly hot. So we went, it was like 70s, yeah. and we were in the shade, and it was great. And we picked like five that- pounds of blueberries. Nice. And made blueberry crisp, and I'm really excited. That sounds fun. <laughs> sounds good. It has nothing to do with RPGs, but it was still a good, a, a good little morning. <laughs> good, good. It's, yeah. I, meanwhile, I just had to put down a, a rampaging puppy to bed. She was, uh, <laughs> she was running off. I don't know if you saw her in the background here, but I'm trying yeah. to get her in bed, and she's running all over the living room, like doing laps. Like, no, I'm not. I'm not going to bed. I just woke up. I haven't That's gone great. outside and eaten a bunch of sticks yet. Need to fix that. <laughs> yeah. 
Um, which is a lie. She spent, as soon as I got up, I, I took her outside and she, she sat around at the dog park eating sticks. That's she just eats that. them. That's good. You know, it's fine. She strips the bark off of them. I, just, I don't let her actually eat them. Okay. Well, that's, um, that's good. Yes. That's but good. Uh, so anyway, so we've been busy, obviously, but we have. But we, we both, both finished. We both finished Persona 5. Yeah. Yeah. And I was actually surprisingly was not too far behind you this time. Yeah. Towards the end, I started to catch up. Yeah. But we did have to take a break because we've both been busy. Correct. Uh, yeah. Glad to be back for it, and I, we can finally discuss it. Hopefully, it's still okay. somewhat fresh in our memories. I know you I took hope notes. so. We're gonna have to like talk back through it as we go along. I still have some notes written down, so yeah. it'll be it'll be good to reference. But um, but okay. yeah. Uh, what are you first? Of, first off, like overall thoughts of the end oh, and of the game. Overall thoughts of the end and the game. I really enjoyed the end, as sad and angry as it made me. Not angry, but like. It wasn't what I wanted, so I was like, you know what I mean? Like, I was like, stop, no, just stop doing that. But, like, it was a really good ending, despite that that reaction. Um, yeah. And I was really, really happy with it. I love the way they did it and the way they handled it. Um, and the game overall, it's yeah. one of my favorite games I've ever played, hand yeah. down, hands down. Real good, really good. Yeah. Hey, guys, just as a quick warning, um, if you have not played through Persona 5 or have started it but have not finished it. This is probably not the talk show for you. Just not this episode. Not yet. <laughs> big, big spoilers. You might want to go yeah. back and watch some of the episodes where we're covering parts that you're already at. Yeah. We'll usually start off by saying about how far in each uh, or how many yeah. like which palace we're on and stuff that should yeah. give you an idea. But we're going to be talking um, about like the giant plot mountain and like the ending of the game and all yeah. like huge, huge stuff. So, um, so just keep that in mind. <laughs> Right, right, exactly. Uh, major spoilers coming. Now, I'm trying to remember when the last time we left off with the last episode was, and... That's what I was trying sorry, to think of. I know, um... You had done... Had you finished the casino? I'm pretty sure by then I had finished the casino. I don't I don't recall whether or not I had actually gone up against Shido by that time. Okay, I think, I think you had just gotten through Plot Mountain, actually. I think okay, you had just gotten through the big block of plot, and you were, hadn't seen yeah, Shido yet. Okay, okay, so that was like okay. right before I started Cheeto's Palace, and so. that was, I think that was when I knew he was the target, and that was about it. Yeah. Yeah, um, that sounds right. That, yes, so. I, I think that's where we can restart from, so. Yeah, I say we go from there. That I have written down. So Plot Mountain was, uh, what you're referring to is when we fake our death, right? Correct. Correct. That's like kind of Yeah, the, the whole like two hours of cutscenes. <laughs> we just which, that through. was... And you learn like a, a whole pancakes thing, and and Akechi's just kind of the worst, and uh, yeah, and Sai turns good, and you get to see how mm -hmm. you can use the metaverse to trick people into thinking all kinds of things, and yeah, know, the, you, yeah, the metaverse has some tricks to it, yeah. some serious trickery, and then like your um, whole group is like smarter than you give them any credit for. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Andy says at the time I was about partway through Shido's Palace, so that's fine. That's okay. We can we can recap from there. From yeah, the beginning I think we'll start. I think palace. we'll start from the beginning anyway. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, um, man. Pancakes. So, <laughs> so going back to that dude, uh, just seeing the ship the first time i got to shooter's palace i gotta say it's it's like so overwhelmingly depressing because he it just kinda... like yeah because he's like i'm gonna build a new japan but you're like no your your <laughs> distortion is that japan is dead and it's yeah. like apocalyptic it's awful and, and we were discussing this and i don't want to get too political on the show or anything i'm, I'm fine doing it on my cast but during the show you know i'll keep it relatively light but we kept yeah. remarking on the parallels between that and like current real life political happenings whether that be in the US in Europe in in Britain wherever um where basically that's like such a, a common line that that politicians are using now all over the world not just in the US but everything is destroyed everything is awful so you need to put your faith in me because I'm the one that can save us yeah. so they have to convince first everybody that everything is broken that everything is hopeless so that they can basically have more control over things. They want to start right. with a fresh slate, right? right? Yeah. And that's extremely, not only what he puts forward to the public, but also what he truly believes. Yeah. Right. And that's, that's kind of what's scary about Shido and what I think makes him a good villain is that he truly believes what he's doing. Yeah, absolutely. Oh, absolutely. Mm -hmm. I think that's good. Like with, with any villain, um, for sure. Yeah. He just mm -hmm. like thinks that this is the right course. He just think, I don't know. And he really like, believes that he's the only one that can do it. Yeah, so he's working so hard in such the wrong way <laughs> to like, yeah. achieve his goals. It's like really crazy. 
Yeah, I I do have to say, as far as villains go, I really like Shido. Uh, Akechi, I think, could have been developed a lot more. And I've talked, we talked about this before because we got to wrap up Akechi's whole plot. Or maybe you, not. No, you didn't no, that's know right. You hadn't seen his ending yet. His plot wraps up in Shido's palace. That's right. That's I, right. Should we should we approach that now? Because I have some thoughts as well. <laughs> it's pretty. It's relatively early in the palace, so like, yeah, absolutely. Why not? Okay. And since we're on the topic of bad guys anyway, Akechi definitely counts as a as a villain. Yeah. Okay. So, do you want to go first? <laughs> Sure, if you want, if you want me to. So basically, just just for a recap for anybody who's you know trying to remember what exactly happened, uh, Akechi was working for Shido. He was the one uh, going through the metaverse and doing all of his dirty work, causing the mental shutdowns because he had access to it. I don't think they really go into much detail about how he originally gained access to the metaverse. He just kind of did, um, and I think that it follows the rules of like maybe you have to have pure intentions to get your persona but you don't have to keep your pure intentions with it afterwards things can be, become distorted i don't think it's yeah i don't think it's even necessarily pure intentions i think it's more the rebellious nature like he that, clearly yes. wanted to rebel against his dad which so it's not it's not the best intentions i think he went into this True. being like i'm an angry teenager which a lot of our teammates seem to kind of fit but mm -hmm. he just was like so distorted by it which is weird because you're like you should have a palace but you don't because you got this thing right. first so i think it was like maybe True. he was on like kind of a line in between and then i the yeah. game mentions that like he and joker are kind of like on a parallel like they were kind of yeah chosen absolutely at once right and then like absolutely and, and they do at, took it at the end they do kind of explain where they came from in that regard yeah um that ultimately it's sort of a game between gods yeah right yeah for sure yeah, so, so um, I mean, that's kind of how he was given it, I think. He's, yeah, he's kind of the dark Joker, and he does have some unique powers. You know, he's able to hide his true his true persona. He's able to project a different persona in order to deceive, which is where we got. Yeah. Uh, I think he had Robin Hood originally. Yeah, he did. Uh, and his little princely outfit, which I still <laughs> thought was Weird. way too suspicious. Yeah, yeah, little I know. Disney <laughs> prince outfit. Yeah. Um. Now, Akechi, I think, was a little bit underdeveloped. Um, they okay. could have they could have gone into a little bit more detail about him and, and basically made him a little bit more understandable. And at least, you know, he doesn't really, I don't really feel like he quite believes in what he's doing at the end of the day. On the surface, he might, but I think deep down, he really understands that what he's doing is wrong. But at the same time, they did, they did give him a little bit of that, like, pitiable quality where he might realize that what he's doing is wrong, but he's so far gone, he just doesn't care. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. So we, so we kind of get that. I think he's like backed himself up into a wall in a way, you know, where he's yeah. like, this is my goal. This has been my goal. This is my goal. This is my goal. So like, he just doesn't just, I probably the idea of going back on that is just like, it, it is, um, inconceivable. He's so <laughs> inconceivable. Yeah, exactly. Um, <laughs> yeah, no, he absolutely, that does make sense to me. Like he's kind of all in, so he can't back out now. And they just some, and you do get that sometimes when somebody commits too much to an idea. And even if they realize they're wrong, that well, now I'm so, yeah. I put so much into this idea. I, I just can't abandon it and see the truth. Yeah, for sure. Um, and yeah, no, Andy, you're right. Yeah, that's a good way to put it, actually. It's a really good metaphor. Akechi's like Riku and Joker's like Sora. Akechi got the Keyblade first, but then Joker was given it. Yeah, that makes sense. I get it. <laughs> How could that be true? Hey, you yeah. Stardust. You're right though, Devil um, Crown. The game was really long, so taking even yeah. more time to develop Akechi, it's I can I can see how that could be an issue. But I mean, you I have, can understand. You that. know, you have days where you get to just hang out with your confidants and develop them if you want to. So right, I kind of wish that we had like gotten some time to like maybe hang out with Akechi and maybe develop yes. a little bit more of a relationship yeah, with him. That would have been cool if it gave you like an optional way to to bond with him, um, just in case like you could. So like you could get like more nuggets if you wanted to about their backstory, just like you could with everybody else. That would right, be cool. So then you have like the option to just get a little more rather than be forced to like only know a certain amount. You know what right, I mean? exactly. Even yeah, that's a good idea. Yeah. That's a really good idea too. And I, and I agree with that for sure. Cause I, I really feel like if we had been able to develop a little bit more of an attachment to Akechi, then his betrayal would have seemed like a bigger deal to me. Oh yeah, um, that's a good point. Yeah. Yeah. Cause, cause by the time he betrays you, he's only in your party for like one dungeon and he's kind of like already super sus. I don't like, you know, when when it when it came when it came about, I just feel like I was just like, wow, you betrayed me, bro. I can't believe it. 
Whereas like, even if I suspected him, if I had taken a little bit of time to get invested in his storyline and, and, you know, give, kind of accept him really into our group of friends, yeah. Then you know, like he's seen hanging out with us, sure, but he's still the new guy when he betrays us. Oh, for you know? sure. Yeah, for sure. Who's who's already been against us the entire game. Yeah. Um, but anyway, it's a, it, he does kind of get his uh, his moment in the sun and a little bit of redemption. Where at the end, he's he sacrifices himself for us to save us from his his cognitive shadow self. I, I know, it was it was getting complicated at yeah. the end on Cheeto's ship. It was but basically they, sh shielding him or shielding us from the. Or facing off between Shido's version of him, like Shido's defenses, yeah. that was him. Kind of, yeah. Yeah. Basically, which felt like like sort of an, an unbefitting end for his character. Like like I almost feel like he should have had a little bit more of a blaze of glory. But maybe I kind of feel like that because they went a little bit like PG thirteen with it, and he like shoots the button on the wall so that the door closes and we can't see him die. That also totally made me think that he was gonna come back, hundred percent. Yeah, well, I, it was the whole like, oh, his life reading's gone. I'm like, oh, then he's dead, and that's really, I, I, I personally did not like that writing choice at all. Yeah, yeah. exactly. I mean, I know I, I talked about it with my chat, and they're like, what else would you rather them have done? Like, you know, death can be very symbolic, blah, 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 and I'm like, that's fine, but there's something about the way he died it was like using that cliche with the door closing, I'm sacrificing mm. myself for you at the last second, cause so maybe I'm kind of good. But it was like, uh, yeah. why are you using that now when you've had this like really good writing throughout and then you're using like this kind of cliched thing with a character that I agree could have used a bit more development and it's like they just like pushed to have that happen really quickly and it just felt like, yeah. I don't like when, I, I don't like when a, okay, it's like, okay, okay, think about it this way. <laughs> I agree 100% so far, guys. Yeah, so like Game of Thrones, I hmm. I can't, there's nothing really spoiled, um, except for the fact that if you've never seen it, people just die all the time. But that's a just lot. like yeah. a thing in the show, right? But yes. with yeah. this, it's like, this is all very calculated. So having a death, right. I feel like with all the stuff they've been able to do with all the other characters, Death a lot of times is a cop out to me personally. I feel like that in writing. When they Honestly, kill off a yeah. character, think about a lot of TV shows you watch. When they kill off a character, you're like, mm, they were the force because the actor was leaving or they just couldn't think of what else to do with the character. And it's like, I get much. that a catchy, there is some meaning to the death. And again, that like symbolic thing or whatever, whatever you want to put. He, to he it. redeems himself a little bit. Right. But it's just having him die was like, well, his job's done, so we're gonna kill him off. Like, that's what it felt to me. Definitely, and like, I, I yeah. don't think that killing him was a bad idea. I think that yeah. Akechi's death um, it could definitely serve a role. It could've been done you differently, know? for sure. It's kind of like, so in Watchmen, there's a character, this is a spoiler of, of a pretty old comic and movie. Um, I, I, have you seen it? Have you watched it? Who watches the Watchmen with like, Rorschach no. and- I haven't, not okay. yet. Okay, do you mind if I, do you no, mind yeah. if I spoil anything? Yeah. Chat, yeah. Oh. anybody? At the end, Rorschach dies. He's like okay. one of the main characters, and he's the real badass guy with like the ink blot mask. Yeah, he's killed by the other heroes um, because he's he basically he realizes this awful truth, and because of his inability to compromise, he's going to go basically out this truth. And like normally, we're rooting for the for the heroes to do that thing to to speak the truth that no one wants to hear. Yeah. But Watchmen's a little bit more gritty and realistic, so the the heroes realize this is a, an unfortunate but necessary lie that we're telling the people we can't let this out i'm sorry we have to kill you and even though yeah. they're his friends they kill him and what the writer said about uh, alan moore said about the character's death was his inability to compromise he realized about halfway through writing it that he would not live this story that yeah. because of that sheer fact and i think it catches kind of the same way less because he can't compromise which is still kind of true of him but more so because he's just so far gone into this revenge thing you know what i mean yeah he he can't survive the story because he doesn't have that he doesn't have that uh, that balance that all the other characters have, that, that yeah. decency to them. Yeah. Um, yeah. It's more so the way they did it and yeah, the fact I that like, he could have had a really, he could have had a really cool exit. He could have had like, a, well, okay, here comes the super powered version of me. Right, like he, he shot me and I'm wounded. I'm going to stab him at the last second. We could have had like a cool action sequence. Or it he feels like, like he got cut because of time. Yeah, or he could have like come back around the time uh, or like mm -hmm. during the Shido fight itself. For so you sure. Can see that kind of like, cathartic response from him and he could have made even better decisions then. Um, exactly. Shoutouts. <laughs> yeah. Is that 
Is that Shadow Talon? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, Shadow Talon. <laughs> oh. um, but yeah, no, I think, I just think that there could have been, it could have been more of a buildup. I mean, it's not like you have to make, you have to make every death super dramatic. I mean, it's, it's but it's like sure. they did, but it wasn't in a way that was like appealing enough or satisfactory enough, you know, like. Definitely agree. Satisfying enough. Because here's the thing is story wise, as we've mentioned, they set him up to be a parallel to Joker, who's our main character, super important. Even if he's kind of a blank slate, he's still he's very central focus of the story. Yeah, if he's supposed to be a parallel, he should have been even more so. Especially exactly. The end. When he started being more involved, there should have been a bit he, more there. He he deserved more, I think, yeah. as much as he's he's pissed me off in the in the past. I think he deserved a little bit more and it could have really helped redeem his character. Um, if other characters, yeah, if other characters acknowledged it more, that would have helped too. Yeah, it definitely feels like uh, it was just a lot of yeah, a they, lot of elements. Yeah, they may have don't been talk cut about it much after that. I mean, there's like so much else to, to worry about that. I guess maybe. Yeah. But then, like, still, even after, I don't know. You just don't hear about. But, I don't know. Even even when they confront Shido about it, like that was your own son. He was like, I knew it was something like that, and yeah. he just glazes right over it. Like yeah. he just and like that Shido, sure, but I, it's. He could have, we could have had a little bit more, you know? Like, yeah. that's when Akechi, like, does They're, the whole even homeward like, bound, stumble over the hill. Then, Screw you, Dad! Yeah, Psh, yeah. Some, something cool yeah. could have happened. For sure. Yeah, like, more, so so more around his death, and then, like, even even if he wasn't in the Shido fight, Shido could have, like, mentioned him a bit more. Because he did yeah. go, like, oh, I know that was my son. Yeah, he did. Like, he, I knew he reminded me of that woman. Yeah, we yeah. never get anything about his mother. Yeah. You know? Yeah, he, he, he like, briefly mentions her in his backstory. Right. It's like maybe during the fight, there could have been a moment where he was, he was like treating us like a catchy and like would bring that up. Just like something to kind of relate mm -hmm. us back to a catchy so that it was like we were kind of, we kind of ended on the same side. Yes. You know, yeah, definitely. Some, I don't know, something. You think yeah. it was okay? It would have added up too much drama at one point. It's, I mean, it's just, it, it, it just, the, the literal area when he died, Game Prime, I'm going to shoot the gate mm. closed so you can't help, and then I'm going to shoot myself. <laughs> and then you're like, oh, I, Exactly. Okay. I, it Bye. felt like a cop-out. A catchy yeah. death was, to me, a pretty big cop-out. Yeah. Um, I don't think, Leslie, I don't think it's quite a plot hole. It's just more like an unexplored, like, his mom wasn't exactly, didn't really seem relevant to the plot, but had they explored her a little bit, we could have gotten more character development. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Them out. That's, that's exactly right. Yeah, so it's like, if you wanted to add more character catchy, that's a way to do it. But there's the thing that, like, if you find that there is a character, like, you will go in certain series and um, find things out about characters. You don't have to know every aspect of their life. Like... Mm -hmm. the, the relationships that are important to Akechi in this instance is who his dad is and how that has affected him. And right. uh, and then, like, and him, his relationships with, like, Sai and our group. And, like, yeah. those are I, those are what the writers seem to, to deem the most important, obviously. And that makes sense. Like, they're, they're yeah. So, like, in other things, like, in stories, there are going to be characters that don't have character development in certain areas. But it's usually right. for a reason. Like, you don't always need to explore all that, I guess? It's not definitely not necessary. You don't need to know every every single character's entire family tree. You just need to know what's important. In, in yeah. Akechi's case, his mother died when he was very young and he barely remembers her. Yeah. And I'm sure that he cared for his mother, but again, he was so young, he just bounced, he grew up bouncing uh, right. or orphanage to orphanage to foster home. Yeah, that's and that's so, what he talked about. So like, why bring up his mother if, if like that didn't, it like affected him, but not in a way that like the memory of her would be meaningful to us in a way. Like think about like mm -hmm. Little Little Mermaid. Little Mermaid, she's got a dad, and that relationship is like the important <laughs> thing in the film. But like, where's the mom? That. But do we care? It's like Who knows? you're like, oh, that's a bummer. Her mom's where's the mom? But then like King Triton's like a whole like mythological figure, so that's kind of the important. She's probably thing. a horse or something because <laughs> mythology. Um. Yeah, but like, but they, they, you know, focused on the important relationships to give us the story that they really wanted to give us. So the fact that she wasn't yeah. there, is it doesn't destroy the story. So like having a catchy yeah. mom not in the story is not going to destroy it. Like that's, no. that didn't bug me at all, actually. I think so. I think so. So kind of, so one of the other things that kind of bothered me about a catchy was his insistence on being a He's such like a he's such like a finger curler, you know. He's such like a <laughs> kind yeah. of evil. You know? He's he gets like a when when he starts explaining his plot, 
even after he's like a little bit redeemed. He starts explaining his plan. He's like, and the boy detective was born. I'm like, okay, Akechi. <laughs> that was also very cliche when the two bad guys are explaining all of the details of their dastardly oh, plan. <laughs> yeah, okay. Yeah, I even forgot about the Shido Akechi scene in, in Shido's it's office. It's like 15 <laughs> that was... minutes long of them being like, let's talk about everything that we've just done <laughs> up until this point and everything we're going to do next. You're like, exactly. we, could kind of, we could kind of discern a lot about our own. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, it's a little bit of a problem. And, and you know, I do agree with that. It doesn't typically work in in traditional storytelling as we know it, books and movies and stuff. When you introduce a character that late in the game and then trying to develop them. So like Haru and Akechi both get a little bit uh, underdeveloped. Although yeah. I don't think that Akechi was really, Akechi was introduced pretty early on. We just don't uh, yeah. get to know Haru, more about Haru him for a long time. Haru got the, the least development out of all, unless you do her mm -hmm. rank, like her ranked mission. But that's still only like, it seems like it's only one aspect of her, well, maybe two, the gardening plus her family situation. Sure, so yeah, get, like, she definitely get, didn't like, get enough. a chunk of her life, but I don't feel like it's a big enough chunk. You get to kind of see a bit more of everybody else's as you go along. Um, I would have loved so, to have seen more of Haru for yeah, sure. Yeah, so you like have to like waifu her in order to really get a feel for who Haru is. Otherwise, she's just kind of yeah. left in the dust. Which I mean, but, it's it's happened in other games before. Occasionally, by you the like way, character. Uh huh. Yeah, true, true. I did, I did get her her confidant to ten and had to friend zone her, it's so I got to see that so scene. So sad. I have that written <laughs> down as a note. I was devastated. I was like, That's, no. I know she's like your new your new waifu. And you were, but you were already committed to Makoto, right? I had already committed to Makoto, and she's like, oh, okay, I'm gonna go mm. study. I'll talk to you later. And you're like, no, I didn't, I didn't wanna hurt you. It's like, yeah, and you're oh. like, you're not gonna go study. You're gonna go cry in your it's bedroom. So Come on. Sad. <laughs> it's so sad. I, I was so sad. Oh it's okay, God. Andy, okay. It was awful. It was awful. <laughs> yeah. Uh, it's, I definitely agree with you. It, it, if you introduce all your characters earlier on, then you have a better opportunity to develop them. Uh, maybe a little bit of a mistake, and again, might have been a, a time restraint thing, or maybe just a Technically, we saw Haru pretty early in the game, but we, but True. we got a glimpse of her in a car. True, and you're yeah, like, but she's gonna come back up later, but we know absolutely nothing about her. Pretty much, yeah. Hilarious. Nothing. But there's so many other things going on at the time too. You're just, I can't even think. I do, okay, game. Whenever you want to explain that character, go ahead. I'm gonna be <laughs> focusing on the four thousand other things you're throwing at me. Yeah, exactly. I mean, there was a lot um, going on in that game, so I can yeah. see how it would have been difficult to introduce too much too fast with some of these characters. Like, I get it. I get yes. it. It's still a bummer, but I get it. You know. Definitely, definitely. Um, but so let's see. So we kind of we get That's um. So we get the whole Akechi background. He sacrifices himself. We think he's gonna come back and he doesn't. And that's like maybe midway through Shido's ship, right? Or maybe a little bit earlier? Uh, when you actually get to his death, it's actually pretty late. You've done almost It's pretty late. Else. Okay, okay. Yeah, I think you've gotten um, all the, almost all the letters, all but one, or you've gotten all of them and you're about to go face okay. them. Uh, that's okay. what, somebody mentioned that and that sounds right. <laughs> it's been yeah, a couple yeah. weeks, so apparently we have short-term memories and can't. <laughs> Yeah, it's a, can't get back there. Come, come, we would play with so many video games. Who can remember all this? Yeah. Um, did they reveal what that was? I think they do reveal what size rank ten confidant bonus is, but I don't remember what it is. Um, you got all I the think, letters. Oh yeah, what was the what was the um? Oh, before you got a catchy. Okay, the cleaner was the guy you fought right before. Yeah, and you're like escaping right, okay. where the cleaner was. That's right, that's After right. After the yeah. hilarious scene of Yusuke drawing a tattoo and be like, mm, I don't want to draw this. <laughs> yeah. I love Yusuke. He's such an artiste. <laughs> I love him. He's great. He's so freaking funny. He's so funny. He is, Yusuke's kind of my mans, I'm not going to lie. Um, <laughs> I would seriously love, I would, I would love to see a, some people mentioned like either a gender bend or like a gay option so that you could date a bunch of the boy characters. I want, just I've said more. this, I would love I've to. said this from the freaking beginning with Yusuke. Like just, I want Joker mm -hmm. and Yusuke. That's my OTP, man. That's my OTP. As I'm, much as I love Haru, like Joker and Yusuke. I could see it. I mean, we'll have see you it. seen Joker once say that he's not into guys? I haven't. No, mm -hmm. He just, 
he just st- he silently like just lets everyone assume he's just like he's like I'm gonna let society does do what it do. <laughs> I pers- I think he's by. I think he's by. Yeah, um, <laughs> he might be, man. <laughs> but yeah, look, if you did some of the side quest stuff with Yusuke, if he asked to like hang out with you, you like watch an art film together, and then you like talk about it, and you have like, <laughs> coffee, or like you go out on a boat together, like a couple. Yeah, and you like and then get mistaken for a couple. Too. Yeah, and you get mistaken for a couple, and then. You hang out at the planetarium together, or like you go to a museum together, or it's no, just. It's... I'm not gonna lie. I wish I had a dude friend like you, Ske. Like yeah. I don't care. It's, sure, I would love a relationship like that, but also like just a just a dude friend that I go to the planetarium and like or like hang out and help him do art. Like yeah, fuck yeah. yeah. I would yeah. do that. that. Sounds adorable. You kidding me? My my. I love I that. S- I see like a Sorry. clip of my bunny, and she was trying to eat a piece of hay, and she was having trouble because it was bent back. And like in going into oh. her neck, so she can't eat it because oh, no. it was like going in the wrong <laughs> angle. I'm sorry. It's just right That's above. Okay. It's just right above your camera. It's really funny to watch. <laughs> anyway, but yeah, um, Yusuke in real life would be hilarious. I would friend him in a heartbeat. Yes, definitely. I, I personally love Yusuke's complete lack of reluctance to rely on his friends. Like if he if he wants wants help with something or if he wants you to come along to do something, he just says it. He, like anybody else would just kind of be like, oh, I know that I'm asking a lot or like, I hate to ask, but Yusuke yeah. is just like, hey, uh, do you want to go to the planetarium and, and watch <laughs> the stars? I'm yeah. kind of feeling like watching the stars. He just has like none of that, yeah. none of that like social yeah, well, niceties. He he does include like, like it would be, it would be a very nice thing. Like he has like a very like sweet, <laughs> blunt charm about him it's weird yes yes he does yeah and then he like, walks up and you're like why are you holding two lobsters and he's like they were so beautiful i couldn't resist and he's like i've run out of money though and he just holds get... them around the beach and you're like what and then, like what does he do with them i mean if you put them back know. in the ocean they're probably dead i maybe don't think they're maybe that's a bit of plot that i really wish that i had what did he do with the lobsters <laughs> where did the lobsters go it's just the atlas. next scene and they're gone yeah atlas just... where did the lobsters go what happened? There's no way that he let anybody eat those lobsters. <laughs> Yo, the, um, Yusuke and his lobsters were, was one of my favorite scenes ever. That That is just why he was such a perfect character to me. So good. Yeah, it's just like, it. it's, he's very well-defined. He's a very well-defined character, but yes. he has depth to him. So it's not just like he's only weird. You yes, know, he's yes, got it, depth exactly. you can see when he grows. Like that's one of my favorite things about like all your main characters, especially if you rank them up as well. You mm-hmm. literally see them grow as a person. You really do. Yeah, even yeah. Ryuji, our bro, who Yeah. as who we just got to love, but you know, he he has some stuff Bless to work his heart. On. Yeah, bless his heart exactly. Um bless his you heart. still see like this period of growth, not only if you rank him up to 10 like I did. Um, which is a really, it's like a nice story for him. It really is for that kind of character. I, would, I wish I'd done so. I think it was a good, I think it was a good way to uh, handle it. And then not only that, but then after everything with Morgana, toward the very end of the game, he's like so cool about everything. I know. Yeah, he suddenly he becomes so like. Good. He was so worried and like such a guy. He grows, he grows a decent amount himself too. You know, he's yeah. still, he's still our Morgana, but yeah. um, he does handle the news really well, and for I'm sure. glad that. I'm, I'm glad that he's stuck around. You know, I'm, I, I felt really sad when he was like gone and yeah. they do it on purpose. But then they, they do the like psych, he's back like 10 seconds oh, later. Oh yeah. yeah, when he like seems like he just ran up and then died. It was like they, they pulled yeah. a Goofy. They pulled a Goofy. The, a Goofy? Uh, never mind. Okay. <laughs> okay. Um, Some people will yeah, it. So they like, they killed Morgana for like 10 seconds and then he just comes back. But like, yeah. dude, talking cat, how do you, and that, and oh, that yeah, leads me a little right bit. The end. Well, because he like fades off. You know what? I would have been fine either way, even if he wasn't there after. Because they were already yeah. doing a good job of like keeping him in their memory, where if that had continued, I would have been like, oh, that's sad, but it's okay. Because they sent him yeah. off so well. And then he comes back and he's like, fuck you guys. Yeah, he's like, I'm still here. I was just and embarrassed like, about coming back earlier, and you're like, you're such a little shit. <laughs> see, I really thought this was gonna be one of those games where like it was all a metaphor, and like yeah, it was just like I thought it was gonna be one of those, but then we just end up with a talking cat. So I feel like that, like no, not so yeah. much. <laughs> yeah. Um, the church scene kills me. Which church? Oh, 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 the church scene. Yeah. Oh my god, with uh, with yeah, with um, with Futaba and uh, Sojiro. Yeah, no, definitely. Oh yeah. Um, oh, that was so sweet. And and I think at that point Morgana's still like gone and we just think he's he's like gone forever. He's not like dead, but he just doesn't exist anymore. Yeah. Um 
and Sojiro's just sitting there like, oh, he'll come back when he's hungry. And you're just like, you can't even tell him. I guess you could, but I think I got legitimately like emotional at that moment. Actually, I was like, "Girl, don't I cry did too. on stream." Yeah. <laughs> and it was like, I, I was like, "Why do I feel this way about Morgana?" He just I was like, I was tearing up. Time. Yeah, I was legitimately tearing up, and Morgana pissed me off more than most characters. Right? Yeah, I think I got you know? a little choked up too. But it's just it's because they gave him this like really wonderful demeanor of how he was kind of like fading out. He's like, "Well, you yeah, know, it, my job's here's done, guys." He's like, "It was a pleasure," and then you that's know, that. Out. That was when that was when I think he finally kind of came into his own was when his existence was in his mind ending. Everybody thought that he was going away forever. Yeah. And he was just like, I'm OK with this. This is yeah. when like I feel like old Morgana, early game Morgana would have been would like, have no, I got to be a human, human, blah, blah, blah. Right. Yeah. Exactly. exactly. So convinced that he's human and so clung to something that he's not, which is definitely a great character arc. You know, yeah. he's convinced he's something he's not until he realizes what he is. Yeah, yeah, yeah uh, sure. a, a core theme of the game. Yeah, I agree. Yeah, so it's, yeah, yeah. and I think, um, like, when they did bring him back, it was just, like, the way they explained it was fine. <laughs> they were like, I'm oh, cold, you're whatever. still in our conscious, like, still in the conscious mind, so he's able to, like, cognitive mind, so he's, like, could exist in the real world. And I was like, right, that's kind like, of a cool idea, actually. Yeah, it's sure. like, it's like, um... I don't know how many examples I want to use because I don't want to like spoil other movies or anything. But it's like at sure. the end of certain movies when if a character's stuck in like a fantasy world and then um, and then right at the end they come out but they have like a trinket left over or something. And you're like, oh, it's a nice reminder yeah. that that was an event that really passed. And it wasn't just like between people. It was like bigger than that, you know? Exactly, exactly. That's it's like exactly what I was saying about like, was it all a metaphor? Was it all a dream kind right. of thing? Yeah, yeah. Right, exactly. Yeah, exactly. I agree with that. Um, but before that, there's like, there's kind of like a like a huge thing that we haven't talked about before Morgana goes away, which is all of Mementos <laughs> and, yes. and the Velvet Room. <laughs> mm -hmm. Um, so I have a uh, yeah. Okay, so here are my notes. Are you ready? Mementos. I wrote down fucking creepy ass Last Palace. <laughs> yeah. And apparently everyone <clears throat> sucks or has given up. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, pretty much <laughs> pretty much you're talking about when mementos come to the surface and sort of blends with the real world right yeah yeah it was really or weird. are you talking about when we discover the very bottom of mementos no, i'm just talking about that actually okay before okay, it gotcha. spreads yeah so even when you just get down there and you're like oh we want to be in this prison and then you see people like sitting in the chairs and like the veins are going up and you see they're like being drained of life it's like yeah what the yeah. fuck? Yeah. How they like sell their souls for comfort and like sell their freedom for comfort. Like that was a really huge, really poignant metaphor. Yeah. I loved it. I loved it. Yeah, no, I did too. I mean, it was creepy in a great way. No, you know? yeah, exactly. It was. And you, you sort like, of see. I know. It makes your but you're like crawl. excited about it. Right, right. It, because, and, because it's stimulating in a. In a I don't know. <laughs> that, <good way. laughs> that was always the scariest thing to me when I was little. When I was a kid, the hardest thing for me to gra to get my head around was people who would willingly like hurt themselves or willingly, uh, you know, um, enter a, an awful, awful deal, right? Like just yeah. resign themselves to something terrible, um, whether it was for comfort, whether it was for sacrifice, whether it was just for self-destructiveness. That was always so disturbing to me. And I think even as adults, that never really stops being hard to watch. Yeah. So when they brought that about and were basically like, this is how a guy like this comes to power is when people are just so defeated that they would rather sit in a jail and get three squares a day than, than, than retain their freedom and earn those meals. That was, that I think really hit hard, it's really crazy, close. It's crazy, man, it's crazy. Um, I know, and then, and then like even seeing the former people that you like fought that had palaces they're like thank you for freeing yeah it's like yeah I mean, yeah just the thank you for freeing me thing like it's just i don't know it's it was just kind of crazy to me to see everybody over there they were like so excited to be back in their prison cell yeah. they're like oh i escaped but this is much better it's yeah like what right it's like why would you why would you be okay with that? Why is that so much better? Why is that? And they realize like they're they're basically saying and and trying and it's like almost supposed to be tempting to the main characters. Like why keep fighting? Why yeah, would like, you ever? Why us. not just exactly? Yeah, yeah. It's so one creepy. of those. Yeah, no. I really loved how they did that. Yeah. Um, and yeah. that that was so exploring that. Okay, so when so when you first. 
got down into the depths of mementos, right? When that first opens up and you walk down and you see the veins going down, did it remind you of the crater, North Crater, in Seven? Yeah. Cause that's yeah, what not, I first thought Not immediately, thought of. but that's not, not what I thought of at the time. But yeah, no, definitely. That's like exactly what that. I thought of. Cause it, it's like, it looks very visually similar. It's like giant light going down. There's a big power at the bottom. You gotta just climb, climb your way down. Yeah into it and, and discover this like really massively powerful thing that's gonna take over everything. And yeah, and that's, and that's where we find the chalice, which ends up being the main bad guy of the game. And this is one instance, this is one instance where I think the JRPG like final god boss was amazing, was like so well written in because even though it wasn't, wasn't like a face that we'd been chasing for the entire game. He was there the whole time. Right? Yeah, so actually, right? so when you first, when you first get there, you're like, well, this is kind of random. You're like, I guess it's been in the yeah. bottom of Mementos, so that's fine. But I guess then once we're finding learn... a cup now. Yeah, but then you get like into the blue, like into the velvet room, and then they and then they talk about it, um, or when you first discover him in there, it's just like, it... I don't know. It's it's a cool way to kind of bring it all back together. Yes. Yeah. Uh, yeah. It really is. Because otherwise, uh, like, because you just have to, you just have to make sure you connect that all back together. Because like, it's very, like, it's very possible to do that. But otherwise, like, it could feel disjointed. But if you're like in there and you're like, I don't right. know, just seeing, yeah, the, right. the Igor twist, man. Remember, guys, if you have not played big the game, spoilers, this is huge. Okay, so um, <laughs> I've never since I since we neither of us have played a, a previous Persona, right? I mean, you had for like a second, but we didn't really Sorry, know. Say again? Since we hadn't really played a previous Persona, or like you haven't played much of one. Um, right, I, I played like a little bit into four. We weren't really accustomed to his old voice. And yes, apparently and that... there's like a slight difference in text that he says. It's like, he said, apparently in other Persona games, they say, welcome to the Velvet Room. And he said, welcome to my Velvet Room. And there were several people in my chat that noticed that. And they were like, mm -mm, something's oh. off. And I was like, I would have had no idea. That's so cool, the and like yeah, it makes me wish difference. I had played others. Yeah. And did, and did you hear about this? The, kind of the reason they, it, I, I love the fact that they basically took a real life occurrence and- Of, of uh, the old voice actor dying in order to change up his voice, but then they could make him secretly evil. They, exactly, they That's really cool. use that in the plot, which is incredible. And in my mind, a great way to, to honor the memory of somebody who served, you know, for a long time as the voice of one of your, yeah. one of your most beloved characters, one of sure. your most recognizable characters is yeah. to, take their real life death and make it part of the plot where he's, you know, we, we as as the audience think, oh man, the, the, the old voice actor died and they got him replaced with some guy that doesn't sound anything like him. Now in English, his English voice actor isn't, isn't gone, but we kind of thought that we thought, you know, we kind of thought that they were changing his voice up because the Japanese voice changed, right? Yeah. So yeah. Igor, he kind of sounds like this or something. Yeah, I don't know, his, his, uh, the when he changes the voice, I was like, this fits his face so much better than the other. Right, one. and I yeah. remember what he sounded like in four. I was like, he didn't sound anything like that. He sounds kind of weird. Yeah, but he yeah. was this imposter demon who had uh, supplanted him, and that's when we get the original voice actor yes. back. And at that moment. I just thought about like the people who do know the original voice. And when that original voice, the, this guy who's no longer with us came back, that must've been such a powerful moment. Yeah, for sure. For him for, for him sure. to come back and be like, I'm free, it's me. It's like, oh my God, our dude, he's You're back like, for makes, one less. Yeah, it makes right so at the end of the sense. game. Yeah, it makes so much more sense. Um, oh my gosh, yeah, it was it was cool. It was a really cool thing to see. And then like, and the, and the Igor voice throughout, I mean, like I started playing that game and I'm like, that voice sounds evil to me. And then I just had to yeah. kind of accept it because it, I was like, I guess he's not. Yeah, yeah. But it's but, totally an evil voice. So I'm like, well, at least it, at least it fit mm. my original thought. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and now I'm not sure when, I'm sure it happens in the main game. Did you, did you complete the strength arcana, the twins? Yes. You did, okay. Yes. Okay, so I'm not sure if it happened, because I did as well. I'm not sure if it happens only if you complete it, but she reforms, right? She becomes I the twins. I think that's um, irregardless plot. I think that has to happen okay. no matter what, because- uh, Regardless, either way, she's gonna- Yeah, otherwise you wouldn't okay. be able to- um... Yeah, I think that I think that literally advances plot. <laughs> Yeah, it was yeah. it was kind of part of the revelation that yeah. Igor was a fake the whole yeah, time, exactly. and that he was the one that split them. That he split, yeah. That he split Lavenza. Um, right. Yeah, she is okay. Look, uh, um, Lavenza. I've, talked to, I've talked to another friend who's just about done with this game, and he could not give two two poops about 
the wardens. And I know some people yeah. love them, and uh, and it's really funny to hear that he does not like them at all. Because I'm like very in between. I'm like they're okay, and I kind of always felt I, that. I'm like Caroline. Yeah. No, she's. I don't. I'm not. <laughs> she's just so mean. Go sit in a corner. You're mean to me all the time. And it's like inmate. It's. I know. It's like kind of cute and funny that she's like trying to put on a show the whole time. But you're like, it's annoying. It's annoying to. Yeah. Me. It's like. It's like, like calm just, down, you aggro yeah, little ten year old. Exactly. Yeah. It's like just calm, whatever. You know I don't believe it. Anyway, just <laughs> just go sit in your corner and I don't know. Nobody play, buys it. Play on your phone or something. Like and then like <laughs> <laughs> whatever kids do these days. Yeah, yeah. And then like Justine's fine. Cause she actually treats you with some respect. So she's yeah, fine. She, but uh yeah. yeah, so then um did you ever lie down on the bed when you were in the velvet room? I think so, but I because, can't remember what happened. Okay, it gives it like goes to black, and a little butterfly goes by and like actually talks to you for a minute, and it's Lavenza. Really? Voice. I, yeah, that's Lavenza, and yeah. she talks to you a few times through the plot. Well, yeah, she's yeah. I think she's the same voice that does the "I am thou, thou art I," thou art I thing throughout. I think so. I think yeah, I think I think she does the the persona narration. Yeah. yeah. New game plus spoilers. I want to do new game plus at some point, so I'd actually yeah, kind of so prefer not to. Hold off on those. I I don't think I'll be streaming new game plus. The yeah, game is a little a little either. too long for me. Yeah, I, yeah, I, I think I'm gonna do it offline. Yeah, especially if we're um, gonna do it anytime soon. <laughs> Cause yeah, um, yeah. Um, yeah. Super so long. so yeah, it's um so the twins are okay in my opinion, but when they reform and turn into Lavenza, I'm like, oh my god, <laughs> she's so <Yeah>. cute. <laughs> She was, she's adorable. Yeah, she comes out of nowhere and like- She's adorable it's, it's, and sweet and wise and treats you with respect and wants to help you work hard to like defeat people. I wish she was like slightly more involved when she reforms at the end. Yeah, she Because she only, she really only does gets... like slightly more than the, tw the twins did, you know, in Mementos where they like heal you. Yeah. She'll like heal you and then you're like, okay, bye. No, thanks. Um, but she's like so <laughs> oh. cute. Oh my God! Yeah, she's and I really liked the, another. This was another instance where they took uh, established themes in Persona and, and kind of spun them on their head, just like they did with Igor's voice. Was Igor always has a Velvet Room companion, yeah. but only um, only one. This is the first one where where he has two. Well, and it wasn't supposed to be. Okay, it makes exactly. Sense. It's not supposed to be two. That's why this is one of those things where once again we think that the game developers are just you know changing the formula up a little bit, but it turns out oh no, we didn't change the formula. Some evil guy's changing the formula yeah! and it's all part of the plot. That's, That's so amazing. Cool. Yeah, it's really cool. That's amazing. Yeah, it's like throwing everybody off and then being like, JK, we know what you wanted, or like we know yeah. we know our own patterns. And we're breaking exactly. them it's, to mess with you it's the, because it's actually evil. It, yes, yes, definitely. It's it's kind of like the classic surprise party. Oh, we forgot your birthday. Oh, what's this? All your friends are in here? Like, <laughs> oh my God. It's exciting. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, no, it's definitely, definitely exciting. Like, even though I know we're new to the Persona series, I can totally see, I mean, it was cool for us to find out. So I can see how exciting sure. it could be for those who are like big Persona fans to be like, this makes so much sense now. Or like, exactly. I love seeing it all come together like this. Like how it how it just like fits. It just fit. It seems like it fits Absolutely. well. Absolutely. Agreed. Really agreed. Cool. Yeah. And that's this is one time I'm grateful that I'm playing it with the chat who can kind of like give me that context behind it. People who have played the Persona games before yeah. fill me in a little bit. Yeah. Definitely. Yeah. I definitely. Think that was really nice. Um. So yeah, it's just uh, I think we'll backtrack again a little bit because I have a couple more things behind all this. But um, yeah, it was really it was it was like a cool moment for me to kind of see all that happen because it was like Igor's like kill him and then you're like I'm about to die and I was like mm mm twins yeah, are gonna no. stop. I'm like okay, show me what's really gonna happen. So I mean yeah. it was, that was pretty easy to see that you're like okay you we're know not gonna it. die. But uh, yeah you know it. But I was curious to see like how that was gonna work and then you have to like. You have to like freaking guillotine them just like you do your personas in order to get Lavenza back. That was actually kind of uh, sad. The gui the guillotining imagery like, just like from the beginning us. is already pretty graphic. Yeah. And then, so yeah, why don't we just throw the little girls in there? Just yeah. go ahead, stick your head under the blade. Yeah. It was a little messed up. Yeah, I know. They're just like they're just like combine us back together, and then you're like you're going in the guillotine. I was like, I didn't think I would have to do that, but. I Japanese mean, fiction's ruthless with kids, yeah, man. Like, they are the kids are not immune from anything. Yeah, I'm like, are you no. sure that's okay? <laughs> um, but yeah, for sure, a massive curveball you never saw coming. Yeah, it was cool though. Another game with Lavenza. Yeah, she's so adorable. She was so cute. Um, the accidental fusion? No, I, I'm not sure what Andy's talking about. And yes, if, if either of us got the accidental fusion. No, no, I, I didn't. Don't think you so, know what I no. still haven't done? I just have it up on my laptop. I need to go back and watch all the bad endings. I forgot to do that. Yeah, oh my God, I've been meaning to. I've heard they're so dark. 
I've heard that too. Everybody's like, especially the Kaneshiro one. Especially. Oh like, my god. poor Makoto. Oh my god. And I'm like, oh my god, I can only imagine. I, can, I, don't I literally can know. only imagine. I don't know. Yeah, yeah. exactly. So we, um, need to, we need to go back and watch that. The Futaba bomb. What was the what was the Futaba bomb? Yeah. I'm trying to remember what the big revelation with Futaba was. Um, wait, hang on. Who's the Futaba bomb? Oh, when she how she did all that stuff behind the scenes? That was with Plot Mountain. We addressed that a little bit last time. Plot Mountain. Oh, right, right, Is there right. Anything else when she... she did that we didn't think about? Uh, I will say that when they do that comeback on the screen. And they're like, we're still here, you know, our yeah. leader's still oh, alive. That was, so hype. that was so hype. That was awesome. That was super hype. I, I loved, loved that part. Loved that moment. Yeah, it was so good. You're just like, I love you, Futaba. You're the best. We're making this that, happen. Yes, exactly. And that's and that was such a good setup too, because the entire game, the entire game, you're such an underdog, right? You're constantly losing. You're constantly way out of your depth. And that and more than that, your characters are constantly wondering like. Do we have to stop now? Or we did like, you know, th there's several times leading up to that that you think you're done. Yeah. That like, this is the last thing we have. But then that's your moment where the underdogs come around and, and stand up and to, to the big guy and say, no, we're taking you down. Yeah. And everyone for once finally is like, all right, let's do this, right? You know? For the most now, part. It doesn't totally not work everybody, then, but... but it starts to kind of like turn the gears. I think I think that was no, a good place to turn the gears so that mm. when they do get to the very end of the game, people are like, oh yeah, that was a thing. True, yeah, that's right. Now. That's so right, everybody's still on, on Shido's side yeah. by then. That's so right, that's right. Like, them, it, it, like for, in terms of the plot, because I know they were trying to make a bigger impact with it, but in terms of plot, yeah. it was like planting a seed, unknowingly planting a seed in the general public to kind of get right. them to side with them right at the end. Um, right, right. It was right. a very... You know, we'll come back to the end because I have a couple thoughts on that too. <laughs> that, okay. and that's like a fun part to talk about. Um, I'm trying to think if there's anything else with mementos that we should cover because there was like Morgana's whole plot development because we've been we had been waiting the whole yeah. game for that. You know? Right, right. Like pretty much from the beginning, there's the where's yeah. Morgana from? What are, what are his origins? Yeah. Um, yeah, and, and so I'm wondering about that dream. Actually, now that I go back and think about it, it seems so like shadow-ish. But if Lavenza mm -hmm. made, I guess Lavenza made him in the back of her mind or something. So maybe he just appeared in Mementos and then got out. Right. So her, I think, I think his, his ultimate purpose was to lead Joker to his destiny. Right. Like he kind of had his, his guiding. He was the guiding light. Yeah. Um, which kind of makes me think like who that who served that purpose for a catchy. Yeah. Um, there might have been an unseen character. He might have arrived at, at the conclusions he did himself, or it might have just been Shido. I think um, I think Akechi did most of it on his own, and that's probably what caused some of his mind to go south, because right. he just figured that he was given this great gift, and then he right. like and, figured it out all by himself, and he was so proud of it, and then like just totally ran with it and went kind of crazy. Definitely, because if you look at it from Joker's point of view, he's kind of given access to the metaverse with a guiding light. Morgana yeah. is constantly reminding him how a Phantom Thief should act, what our what our goal is here. Yeah. And even even though he doesn't really remember his own origins or his own ultimate purpose, he does know the basics of this is how you should act. And yeah. he passes that on to us. Akechi never got that. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, so I think that if he if Akechi had had a Morgana, I mean... He could have been a completely different character, maybe. True, true. I, I agree with that. I May your cat be your guiding that. key. <laughs> That's a great, great combo there. Um, he was yeah. worried it was bad. No, he 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 only remembered his the exact moment of his birth. He was having dreams of the exact moment of his birth, and because it happened down in the Mentos, and because he came from, you know, a shadowy place, he sort of assumed that he was a shadow and that he or he that he was he was some kind of evil incarnation. Yeah. Um, yeah. When really it was just that. You know, Mementos is still the heart of humankind, which is not inherently yeah. bad. It's just bad stuff piles up there. He wasn't one of the bad things to come out of it. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Yeah, that makes sense. That makes sense. Yeah. Um, also, I, I agree, Devo, with your thought about making the game makes your team constantly rethink things and makes them reflect and shows their growth. I think that's really cool as well. Exactly. Yeah, and that's that's such an important Here's part that. of growth is challenging what you know. So yeah. very, very few static. That characters. happens to them all the time. They're like, wait, why didn't this yeah. work? Or like, wait, how do we do this? Or I feel like we're really stuck. I don't get it. Big time, right. yeah. All You're constantly time. challenged. Constantly. constantly challenged. Which is, and yeah, that's how you grow. Great. Yeah, and that's, I mean, that's what caused so much of the intrigue for the game for us. Because they presented yes. you with so many shitty circumstances and characters. You're like, <laughs> how do we, how do we get 
get yeah, past how, this? This is awful. How are we going to navigate this? And yeah. the answer is to keep trying and keep fighting. And that's that's one of the many amazing yeah. core themes and messages of the game that I love. Yeah, yeah I agree. Yeah, it's really nice. Um, yeah, many. it's cool. Okay, so I'm trying to think of what else. You go... What else happens? So you find the door, you go down through mementos, you fight the mm. grail, it gets all shiny because everybody's in love with it. And then you go back to Igor, I think, and then reveals, and then the reveal happens? Then the reveal happens. Yeah. Um, and then I forget what exactly it is that makes it so that Memento starts fusing with the real world. I don't know if now the, like the, the... He decided that it was a, that, that Joker failed, which he kind of, he wanted from the start. And That's then he's right. like, I'm gonna mess you up and everything's mine now, time's up. So he That's just right. decided That's right, he was basically, de right, he was the evil Igor, this this evil spirit. I don't know if yeah. he's ever given a name, I don't think so. Yeah. Um, but uh, evil Igor. He, he does, yeah, no, 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 he... Um, What's his name? Uh, guys, guys, help us out. His name is like a, I don't know, it's not a, it's like a Japanese style name. Um, uh, well, whatever it is. Something. Uh, I evil know. Igor. I'm sure Andy will put it in there. We'll put the name in there. Or somebody evil. like that. Yeah, but Is it Yabadoth? Yabadoth. Yabadoth. Y'all but Y'all de Bath. Y'all de Bath. Y'all de Bowath? Y'all de Bowath. Yeah. <laughs> Crazy name. Whatever. God of control. Let's call him like y'all. Okay. <laughs> Whatever his name is, let's call him Yabadabadu. Uh, he... <laughs> Please call him that for the rest of the show. <laughs> so when we go and fight, so Yabba Dabba Doo gets released. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and goes so... off and starts to like merge mementos and then we all disappear and appear back in the bell room. Because mm -hmm. we have like a little safe, it looks like our little safe, it is a safe room. Basically. Right, and that's that's kind of our last refuge as, like basically because the, the public stops believing we exist and because yeah. we're in mementos at the time and because he man manages to fuse real world and mementos, we start to go away. Yeah. But there's kind of this hidden hidden message here of, well, we believe in us, so you really can't get rid of us. Yeah. Even if none of you believe in us, even if 0% of the population thinks we're real, we know we're real and that's enough to keep us going. Yeah, yeah, exactly. That was I, awesome. I thought it was like a, a tiny bit cliche when you have to like talk all your friends back into joining you, but I still thought it was adorable. I love those moments in I RPGs. Thought was, I, I thought it was very sweet. It's like kind of getting your courage back up and they're like, mm, I'm being stupid, let's go fight, man. Yeah, and yeah, that's- that, really that, sweet. that kind of mirrored one of my favorite scenes in Final Fantasy VII towards the end where everybody has to, re has to redouble their resolve. Everybody yeah. has yeah. to have a moment where they remind themselves why they are fighting, why they're here. And, and it gives the audience a nice restatement to, re to refresh their memory of what exactly their motivations are. It helps you see the characters all basically say, yeah, I'm doubling down. I'm, I'm going to see this through to the end. Yeah. It's really a great momentous moment. And well, I, I, I love those scenes. That happens in life all the time, actually. And like, yeah, I mean, this is a very kind of um, purposeful, demonstrated, like it's, it's a very written thing like it's so it's like yeah. here is the moment but there are times in life where like i know personally i've been going through something i'm like i don't want to deal with this and i'm like there's no way that it's going to get done unless i deal with it so and right then, like, and then you just like get that motivation back up and you just like go you just and, gotta and go lot, for it man so yes, it's a good reminder definitely. for anybody who just gives up you just can't <laughs> remember your remember your ultimate goal and remember that the only people who are going to believe in you when all the things are all said and done are not the the scores of people you don't really know, not the scores of people whose adoration and approval you've been you've been yearning for. It's your close friends and yourself that the are going to keep you going. Yeah, I was going to say, yeah, if you didn't mention, like, a lot of it is you. You have mm -hmm. to be able to, like, it is amazing to have friends that you can rely on that will be there for you. And I think that's very important. But um, I also think, <clears throat> I just also think that being able to find that kind of strength and belief in yourself, even if you don't really always have it, um, yeah. just pushing yourself to keep trying. Like it's, it's, it's yeah, difficult. Yeah, keep that tenacity. Yeah, it's like difficult to explain because you're like, okay, I don't know if I, I don't know if I can do it, but I have to keep doing it. Yeah, exactly. Have like I have this yourself. goal yeah. and it seems impossible, but it's never going to be possible if I don't keep fighting. And exactly. I don't, Nothing will you happen have to find that strength try. within. Yeah, for sure. Right, exactly. Exactly. So it's a cool like, um, little reminder of that. Big the time, bosses, big time. They're, yeah, it was like seven slash eight of the deadly sins. 
the seven deadly sins, right? The final boss was like all of the deadly sins. He was kind of like Yeah, the... he kept pulling out crap out of his arms and he's like, here yeah. are all the sins you have to fight. And I was like, was... I hate you. I'm going to beat him all up. Um, he was surprisingly easy for me. I didn't have any troubles beating him. I did a first try as well. Yeah. Yeah. It, He's fine. Which I I kind of like. I don't I don't necessarily like the final boss being like the hardest boss always because you're usually at the end of a huge amount of plot and you don't want to. You don't want to do sit through a half hour boss battle again. That's exactly I'm what I was okay thinking. Yeah, that's what I was thinking as well because it was challenging enough where you still had to like really plan and strategize and make sure. And you know you can go all out, which usually means that you'll be okay because you're like this is it yeah. and you do know with him that it's that's it. Once yeah, you get that, there, that you're like, well, this is literally the end. And you have to, you have to like, to fight all the archangels, like, going up there. Yeah, you know? yeah. Um, the, like, the four horsemen, angels of the apocalypse kind of thing. Um, there was also a was cool. not so subtle, like, religious theme to the bad guys, which is pretty common in JRPGs. But, like, there was, there seemed to be, I mean, to me, maybe reading too much into it, like, kind of taking shots at the panacea of, or the, or the, or the, the light relief that religion gives where even though it might be an answer to to your problems it's probably not the most wholesome one and it's probably a it's probably you kind of just telling you what you want to hear yeah, in exchange well, you for can't always just like give up your life and rely on something that will not always be there for you and sometimes you kind of have right. to learn how to be there for yourself like i know for me personally i'm not going to talk about my religion in here but um I do very strongly believe in my friends and my family, and I and I force it mm -hmm. myself to believe in myself. <laughs> yeah, which is like what I was talking to. about a minute ago. But yeah, I mean, yeah. it's, it's the the to. connections that you make in your life are things that help keep you going. So, right. It's it's not this otherworldly mystical yeah. holy grail that you've been chasing. This this like one thing that you that you need to find yeah. and you need to get in tune with that'll save your life and make everything better. There's no right. one thing that'll do that. Yeah, exactly. And that's like, it's like a similar idea where it's like, um, you can't just rely, yeah, it's, I mean, you kind of already, you just said it right at the end. It's like, you can't just rely on something else to make everything better for you. You can't just right, be like, exactly. I'm gonna sit back and let you do everything and everything's gonna be fine, right? I don't have to yeah. do anything with my life. It's like, it, like, it can make you feel better if you really <laughs> believe in it, but eventually it's gonna come crashing down because it's not real. Yeah, it's like if you just give up your uh, your fight to drive, like or your drive to fight. I can't. I'm just dyslexic yeah. right now. Um, if you just kind of like give that up or stop working toward it or something, and just try to rely on something else, like you're just gonna either be disappointed or you're not gonna move forward in your life or you're not gonna get these things done. You're not gonna be that positive person, that positive light in the world that or like even like a useful person in the world, you <laughs> yeah. know, that can that can not only benefit part of your own life, but other people like you have You're... to you have to like get off your butt and um, just keep <laughs> working on working on you and like doing things for yourself. And you just can't yeah. you just can't rely on others for that. I mean, it's otherwise you're going to be one of those people yeah. sleeping in the jail cell. Yeah, I mean, you can be like, in the jail cell. You can you want to support and rely on your friends and, and all the connections and stuff. But like just right. I, what I mean is like just sitting back and trying to let something else do everything for you. Is right, exactly. But basically pouring all of your faith into something not non substantial. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Right? Yeah, there you go. Thanks for summing yeah. it up. My five minute talk in like 10 seconds. <laughs> it's much better. Yeah. <laughs> um, I, I personally loved a lot of the metaphors they were working with. You know, there, there was just every single one blended together so perfectly with the other ones that they had put forward. Yeah. They came together in such a meaningful way. Um, it really felt like, you know, weaving a tapestry that finally came together right at the end. And that was so good. That's that's really the, the really one of the defining traits of Final Fantasy VII, my, my favorite JRPG of all time of all these disparate, long reaching plot strands that finally come together at a point. You know, no more yeah, of this JRPG nice. where all the plot threads go a thousand different ways and then just kind of keep going and never come together. Like this one just ends abruptly. Yeah. You know, really, like we said, the only one in my that, that really stuck out in my mind was like, Akechi didn't get enough yeah. screen time. Yeah. But also with the, the, with the whole seven metaphor, it's like they had that very similar, like what we talked about earlier, they both kind of had that kind of cathartic end game. Like when you say they were getting back their resolve, it was, it was not yeah. only that, but they were like, this is why I'm actually fighting. Let's be real here. Yeah. Like they both yeah. had, both games had moments where they're like, I'm going to be real and like shed the kind of artificial reason why I want to fight for yeah. this. And I'm going to tell hero you The hero reason that I'm, I'm fighting to save the world. No, forget they're like not. standing they're up to tyranny and truth and justice. Everybody has their own personal reason for that. Cause anyone can stand up to tyranny. Anybody can stand up and fight. But why? It's 
Why is it you? Yeah. Why is it these seven guys? Or the, yeah, how many, I don't even remember how many characters we had, but how, <laughs> why, why was it these nine kids or however many? Yeah. Yeah. Um, oh yeah, we'll talk about that too, Super Booper. We'll talk about that too. Um, uh, I forgot to mention earlier, um, cause I just saw this written down. Uh, your final bonding moments with Akechi, <laughs> like when you rank up with him, they yeah. were so, it was really entertaining for me. Because really you're abrupt. Like, yeah. <laughs> because you're like, I'm evil, but we're kind of relating, but I'm really evil and about to fight you. Rank up! And you're like, yeah, why like, are you doing that I, right now? I get him so much better now. That's like, what do you did. really? That, like twice in the last, in like the last interaction or the last two interactions yeah. you had with him. It's like, I really feel like I'm getting you. It's like right before he shoots you, he's like, rank up. And then like right before he dies, like rank up. You're like, yeah. why did yeah, you it's like, Now that he's about to die, I really understand him better. Uh, yeah. I really feel like this is deepening our bond. And then he's just dead. So, like what's gonna it's happen? Like, what, what, am I, what am I doing with the social link now? Yeah. Um, yeah. I know, it was really, it, that was really silly to me. I just had to mention that real quick. It really was. A lot of those little pop-ups about the relationships, like I think Andy just quoted it exactly. You found out Akechi was the traitor. You understand Akechi a little more now. <laughs> yeah, exactly. A lot of those were like the most, as far as, as enlightening and hilariously, uh, as, as enlightening and poignant as a lot of the game was, these little pop-ups are often hilariously just simplistic. It's like things the like Sai guessing the, guessing the social link things. <laughs> it's like that too. Yeah. Also with Sai and her um, rank up, it's like the game just gave up. They're like, mm, you're at rank six or seven. We don't care about it's... the last couple ranks. Just go straight to 10. You're good. We're not even Sca gonna... go Go directly to go. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Do not pass go. Go directly to jail. Yeah. <laughs> or rank 10, things. I guess. Yeah. Exactly, man. It's like, it's so funny. Oh. It's like, it was so strange to me, but I don't know, we can move back. We can move back to Endgame now. Um, yeah. Yeah, seeing everybody. Okay, so, so when you get out of the Velvet Room and you go outside into the public and then it's all like um, spines everywhere that you got to climb. I thought that was really cool looking visually. And um, was cool. Very, very cool visually. And a very like interesting idea again when you got to fight all the angels. And I liked all of that. Uh, it was cool. You're just like, wow, I have a bunch of mini bosses before this yep. dude. And I'm like, hopefully it doesn't <laughs> screw me over. I definitely went back and healed and right before as well. Cause there's like a little worthy point, which was really useful. Um, but yeah, there's definitely, once you start fighting uh, Yabba Dabba Doo, because I don't want to pronounce his name, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> um, you definitely get that Paper Mario Kingdom Hearts moment where it's like, oh, your friends believe in you. Like everybody yeah. comes out of the works depending on who you max ranked or whatever. I um, love that, yeah. All the people that you put time into come out to support you. Yeah, yeah, they're like, I'm here for you. And you're like, that's adorable. I was like, I've seen that in yes. like, like, because it's, it, there's just something striking to me about that because having, well, I mean, you have, you don't really know Paper Mario that well. No. Okay. No, that, well, one, that one's a little lost on me. Yeah, and Kingdom Hearts. Ugh. Okay, well, let's say there are moments in these games where, like, it's, I mean, I'm sure there have been in other games, too, but it's, like, end game, mm -hmm. and the hero's not doing so well, and then suddenly, it, like, the game, like, fades out to his friends, and they're all like, we believe yeah. in you, and it, like, gives him strength. Like, it's the Goku that... spirit bomb. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, so it's <laughs> like that, but it's just, this game is, like, so dark on so many levels often, and mm -hmm. it hits really real points and stuff. So to have this like little poignant moment where it's like, we believe in you. Like, it's like so yeah. peppy. It's like, it's just they like all the little- They finally come together, yeah. Cause like, cause some of the, some of my favorite RPGs are like very peppy in a way. Yeah, yeah, this game is yeah. definitely not that. Yeah, sure. cause like Kingdom, or uh, Paper Mario is like, it's it's such like a happy game. It's like a very sure, happy yeah. RPG. <laughs> it's great. So you should- Definitely yeah. not as dark as Persona. Yeah, so we should play that soon. We, we should talk about that actually. Um, uh, yes. But, uh, yeah, so so when you like when you think about that. Oh, also uh Earthbound's another example. Um uh, but yeah, there are all these games another that you I go played. through. I know, but well you will. Um yes, yes. <laughs> But yeah, there's just these moments where it's like so with this game that's like very kind of like gritty and real a lot of the time, or like dark and uh hitting some some really kind of grueling points. It's just like this like really happy believe in you moment i don't know I yeah just, it's, it's just it seems to strike so much harder when then that, when that's not a constant in the game i thought right? it was like silly but but not in it wasn't bad it, it was, was uplifting 
Yeah. It really was. It and was guess, it was a great yeah. moment of lightness and positivity in, a, yeah. in I guess because, a really dark game. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, I guess because I could relate it to other games that are like so much like happier than that. Like yeah. that's what made me think of it as a little silly, but I was like, I'm good with it. Let's roll with this. Yeah, believe in I me. Loved it. Believe in me. I, I love like that it. message. Like, when it's you see Sojiro going to bat for you, I don't know. I don't know if you max Sojiro. He was one of the ones I definitely had to max. But his, when he's going to bat for you, he's like he's like in the, in the detective office. He's like, if anything happens to that kid, you're gonna have to answer to me. I'm like, yeah, fight for me. Did he's I like, max? this was the guy who not long ago Can was I calling max? us worthless. Did you not see that one? I don't know if I maxed him, but I might have gotten that anyway. Oh no. Oh, oh no. You know that might be part of the main plot rather yeah. than the the rank ten guys. Mm -hmm. Um. To be fair, I totally had um Oh yeah, is that her name? The the reporter. Yeah. The drunk reporter. She came out to cheer for me and she was rank zero or rank one with yeah, me. Right, I leveled right. her up zero times. Yeah, so I think um, a few are probably default, but then that is main plot. Some gotta okay, be default. Okay, there you go, Rinky. Yeah. That's main plot, okay. Yeah, so but yeah, still that so moment, because Sojiro was so like, you know, he was like, keep your head down. And uh, you know, it's like, you're not my problem. If you mess up, you're going right back to jail. I or whatever. love <sighs> seeing Sojiro's development. Yes, I... yes, he's probably overall my favorite character in the game. Oh yeah? Yeah, no, I he's think great. So. He's great. I did? I he's did wonderful, I love him. Oh, I may have just, I might have just barely gotten it. You're right, you're right. Yeah. Um. <laughs> Obscurity. <laughs> Andy. Oh my God. Andy Savage. Yeah. But yeah, just co Absolute Coffee Savage. Dad, just his like development and how it, it's like how he acts and how he treats you and how he kind of sees the whole situation and how understanding he ends up being and like and finding out the reasons for why he was acting the way he was. It's like yeah. I've seen characters before that act that that are dicks and then try right. to make it up to you later and you're just like, but you were such a dick. But in this instance, you're yeah. like. Yeah, you're a dick to me, but like, you. I don't even care. <laughs> right? It was like, cause like you understand his motivations for acting that way. And on top of that, when new information yeah. is given to him, he actually processes it and changes his mind. And that yeah. already makes us yeah. like him because he's yeah. able to adapt for sure. and see our, our point of view and see and uh, recognize our value as a person. Yeah, I think um, Sojira's worst quality is his, uh, um, is his uh, fedora. <laughs> he rocks it though. He only he only he busts does. it out sometimes. He busts <laughs> yeah, it out when it's saying. appropriate. There's like not you know? much bad you know? about him. <laughs> I still want to know how he's doing with the ladies. Like, I because we always thought he was he was all flirty and everything at first, but it turns out a lot of times he was talking to Futaba. But like, he's got to be looking for a girlfriend. What's a, what's Sojiro doing? Yeah. I wanted to set him up with a fine honey, a, slight, a nice older woman, yeah. take care of him. Yeah, yeah he, he's earned it. Cool. It seems he like he it. like flirts with some of your friends, but I think it's more so that he's feeling him out for you. <clears throat> At the end of the yeah, day, I, th I, don't, yeah, I don't really that, believe that he's that creepy to do that. No, I I don't think he's a creepy guy, but he definitely seemed like a little bit of a player at first. We oh, definitely yeah. got, he puts oh, on the yeah. door, he's like, I'm going out to see a lady friend. And, oh yeah. And like that's totally okay for a guy his age. It's just you know for any adult, like, but um he was we we kind of assumed that he was like a player we assumed yeah. that he was like a womanizer like that was what he was focused on yeah. but it turns out it's, it's really not it's he just yeah he's and the woman definitely that he interested really, in women but yeah the woman he like really fell for and probably the reason why he's not in a real relationship is because the woman he fell for died was murdered. and and yeah that was like the one that you know sometimes you you like the chase you know i think he just got interested in somebody that wasn't just like are you immediately gonna fall for him? Like, cause she had yeah. so much more intrigue, which makes sense. Mm -hmm. It happens. And um, not yeah. to mention, I think a lot of times we were led to believe he was he was speaking to like he he does kind of like the half eye. He's like, sure, I'll be right over. And you mm -hmm. think that he's being flirty and that he's being then that he's being you know coy, but really he's being caring because I think a lot of times he's actually talking to Futaba because Futaba's calling him up and saying she needs something. Yeah. Because she can't leave yeah. the house at that point yeah, in the game. Exactly. And he's like, don't worry, I'll be right over. He's actually right, yeah. just being every consoling. Time, yeah, every time he gets those phone calls. Yeah, it's definitely her. Yeah, and then you can tell later it's like bringing her over food and doing in the equipment and, and all that stuff. You're just like, oh, Like once you find out, you're like, oh, I forgive yeah. you for all of that stuff. That exactly. And it, it should... Exactly, and it shows you not only can characters change uh, change and be dynamic, but also sometimes your perception is just wrong. You're led to believe something about a human yeah. being Yeah, so maybe, that maybe turns that's, out to be totally not true. Yeah, that could be one of the differences as well, because like, again, with, I'm thinking of like one character specifically from another game, um, but like when a character starts to be a dick in a game, uh, like with, with Sojiro, it's you see that he had, like his, his intentions were in a really good place, 
and he mm-hmm. was doing things that were like really good um and like he totally makes up for it so like let's say uh i'm one of those people that like i know there are a lot of people out there who really like um severus snape right yeah in the harry potter universe they really like him because they're like oh look he was always doing it for lily and i'm like he was still a dick to a bunch of students that had nothing to do <clears throat> with, sure, like, he took his own trauma out on students. So he's, he's a bad person. <laughs> he was. He's a bad, exactly he's like an abusive teacher. Like it's not okay, man. He it's is not okay. Right. At the end Snape... of the day, he's not a great person. He has like one good motivation that like who's knows who's knows. Thank you. Um, he has like one good thing, but it's and then you find out you find out like the reason and you're like oh that's kind of cool, but it like doesn't excuse a lot of this. Was so Jiro, exactly. it's like you see these things that look bad and you're like oh they're not bad at all and it's like right. he's not it's- meaning to like be a dick to you he doesn't like he doesn't like continue to be a dick even though he's trying to do the right thing he's like oh i'm gonna treat you with respect i think it's all about respect man mm-hmm. the other character yes. in the game that i don't like doesn't treat you with any respect like at the end he kind of fixes his ways and then he's right. cool after that um but like- until then He's yeah. a dick, yeah. <laughs> and not for yeah. even like a good reason. Yeah, but so Jiro, it's not like that. Like his his right. depth is so much more genuine in a way, where like he just really is. Yeah, I don't know. I just I just like he's him. <laughs> he's just a guy who's been honestly damaged, and as as a result, he's he's withdrawn. Yeah. You know, he's not exactly abusive but he's withdrawn and he's cautionary because yeah. he's seen so much shit yeah. that's why he's constantly warning you he's not trying to to yeah. hawk on you and make your life miserable yeah, he honestly exactly. is thinking that he's doing the best for you by looking out for you warning you to, to keep in line yeah he thinks that he's doing you a favor yeah and it's not until he realizes that there is merit to rebellion that this isn't a hopeless fight that he gets on your side yeah. but that needs to be proven first because he's like, a guy who's only seen defeat right exactly it's not like where he's like oh well I don't know if I can let it go, and then he like keeps treating you like shit. <laughs> like right. he's good to you, like he's good to you, and I don't know. And like, then he Snape, even he Snape's even, different. He takes out his trauma on Harry because he reminds him of the guy that did it, and it would be kind of like if if Sojuro saw Shido and you, and so was like fuck you. Yeah. Um, clearly it's not just, the case. A little bit different. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. For sure. Um. Um. I don't know, man. I don't know. So yeah. So Jiro is definitely like one of the the tippy top, tippy top characters. Yeah. Dude, <laughs> definitely not the same person. That's great. Um, I'm trying to think of anything else. Yeah. Um, yeah. So then he we drives you to school, right? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. So he has that like adorable nostalgic moment where he's driving you again at the end, and he's like, "Remember this time like a year ago? It was like driving you to your first day of school, and then yeah. he kind of explains some of that." You're just like, "This is so adorable." Like he know. remembers it, and I, I was heartbroken at the end because I didn't want to leave. I don't understand. Why would he go back to his parents who were like, we hate you because... <laughs> Sold um, him up the river. You have a record, so go away for a year with somebody you don't know and we don't really know. That's and also like... yourself and we'll just like send I know, you with right? a cardboard box. And it's like, why is he going home to that? Everybody's going to think that he's like off. Like, I get that it's like, oh, go prove yourself back at home. That's fine. That's an okay message. Yeah. But it's like, but, but come on. It's I. This is one of the places where I feel the metaphor starts taking over the actual narrative, um, where Joker is. Joker is ultimately because he's such a blank slate and because he's his main protagonist character. This is where he kind of stops being a character of his own, because I find it really hard to believe that uh, whatever he has back home, really, that that's purposely never explored. We don't know if he has parents. We don't know if he's going back to like an older sister type deal, like with no, the he photo. Does. He does have parents. So Jiro does said he? That, yeah, so Jiro said he was in contact with them and they sent him over. Oh. Yeah, like at the beginning. I don't remember that yeah, from the no, very he's beginning. he's got parents. They're just, uh, they're just awful. Oh. Well, we, yeah, we just don't know. We don't know anything about, aside from the fact that he has parents, we don't know anything about his home life. More so, he exists to, to draw out the strength of other characters. Because what is, what is Joker always told? What is, what is he constantly told throughout the entire thing? It's like, I can really open up to you. Talking to you just somehow helps me. Everybody says that, yeah. Everybody says that. He comes out, he fixes everybody's life, he helps everybody grow as people, he, he wins the day, and then he just disappears, along with his talking cat. Um, and that's, that's where I think uh, Joker is ultimately, 
he ultimately fulfills his role as a tool of the gods. Yeah. You know, his his job is done, so it's time to go back to, to where he came from. Heaven or a couple towns over, you know? Yeah. Um, to, yeah. <laughs> that was kind of how I took it. Um, well, like summoning a persona that's more like Satan than God. It's, I don't know if he's like going back to heaven. <laughs> wherever he whatever. came from. <laughs> wherever he came okay. from. Yeah. Um, that's that was kind of what the ending represented to me. Um, that's true. That's I did true. kind of like that the the ending had sort of a dreamlike quality to it. That th- things seemed to. I, I had a hard time believing any of it was real. Um, yeah. Until until the credits started rolling, uh, but you do kind of have this nice thought of well, at least we have this one last road yeah. trip with our friends that are that are all going to come with us. I thought that was really you know? sweet. Where they're like, y'all, it it's, it's basically them saying, like, we had this experience together and we're not giving up on you. Like, we understand right. that you're leaving, but this is, it's like, it's the end, but it's also not the end. I think that's really yeah. sweet. It's so sweet. I, I, lo- I really love the ending, as much as it broke my heart, because I just, I wanted him to stay in Tokyo the whole time. I wanted to never leave the new friends. So Jerry you know? even called him his dad, and I'm like, you are more of a father to him than this dude who just abandoned oh his my. kid. I know, <laughs> Sojiro is is our dad Stay for all dad. intents and purposes. Stay with your How's baby. it going, Hip Gaming? Stay with your actual dad. Come on, man. Yeah, exactly. Stay with your coffee daddy. Tell you how to make curry. Yeah. Uh, what did your father ever do for yeah. you? <laughs> yeah. Well, we don't know, but <laughs> he doesn't seem great. I he... assume nothing. <laughs> yeah, if you so... never, if you literally never hear... Okay, we are, this is like, okay, this game is from, I'm getting into this. Okay, this game is from Joker's perspective. We are with him all the time, except for Mm -hmm. when he's dreaming, you know? Or like doing whatever he does in the middle of the night. Always (laughs) through his lens. I probably don't want to see. So (laughs) we are like always with him at night, or like every day, right? And we get, Mm -hmm. we see every text he gets. Not once yeah. does his parents do any of his parents yeah. contact him. <laughs> no, they really don't. Not once. Nobody from his hometown, his parents, no. nobody. Nobody no contacts letters. him for a year. Nothing. No Absolutely care nothing. packages. No, like, tasty cakes from our town that we can't get in Tokyo. He got one nothing. cardboard box when he got there. Okay? So that clearly means his parents do not give two shits about him. They no, yeah, seriously. No, Andy, no, and They no, forgot no. his cell phone number. They know where uh, he's staying. <laughs> you can't they, excuse this. Right? And, and on top of that, like, he's going to come back like a man now. He's not whatever, he is, whatever yeah. they're doing. Like, he's been through so much. He's not even going to be recognizable to his parents. Why not oh, just, yeah. you know, hey, I'm going to go to school out here. So I'll be back home on holidays. Otherwise, you guys kind of suck. What if you, you haven't said hi in a yeah. year? He's because a he's a criminal, they want to. Get, we're just so maybe they disowned him. So what is he going back for? Yeah, I know. If he's disowned, why would he go back? Also, weren't the charges dropped? After a while, they finally got him I, like out of jail and stuff. I mean, I guess I he was in jail, so. but it should have been acquitted. I guess. I don't, I don't know, know if the original charges ever get dropped. I think. I think. I think all of them did. I think all of them did. He's super grounded. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. I think they did retroactively remove that from his record. So maybe maybe that's why he's allowed to go back. Might be um, ashamed of him. Too busy at work is is still the biggest load of crap. <laughs> if you have a child, oh yeah, no. If you have that's... if you have um, birthed and raised a child and you don't talk to them for a year, even though they're in the yeah. same like country, you know where they are. You know, like I that's <laughs> that's that's not an excuse. I can understand if things are complicated, but like work's not an excuse to just yeah. literally contact your child once in a year. They right. technically wouldn't know if he's dead or not. Actually, you know what? They probably saw the announcement that he died. Nothing. For a while. For a while, they probably thought he was dead. Well, no, to be honest, I think they never oh, linked no, no, no. his identity, never, publicly no, linked right, his identity. Right. Just kidding, just kidding. <laughs> One of his parents are in jail. The, yeah, the government knew who we were, but they never announced it. They just said the leader of the Phantom Thieves yeah. was dead. Oh, yeah, I have a talking cat now. Yeah, and Ryuji's gonna crash <laughs> on our couch. Oh, just great. somehow, <clears throat> talking cat. I'm still pissed that Sojiro never got to hear Morgana speak. Yeah, that's kind of a bummer the because then it's just all like, I've ever yo, real quick, and I when just got a tier three resub. Oh my god. Oh, we'll know. Yeah. oh nice, a tier three resub. Yeah. Yeah. Hey, congratulations and, and thank you for supporting. Down two of them, actually. Wait, I got two. Oh my god. The tears to the toilet's gold hue. Thank, Thank you for supporting Foo Foo. Go ahead, go ahead. Do your dance. Go enjoy <laughs> your poo. Okay, he oh. just had some stuff playing. Just the, the audio is still playing. You guys, thank you so much. 
What? Oh my god. Two freaking tier three subs in a row. That's amazing. Um, I will say thank you more after the show is over, but uh, thank you so much, question mark and devastation. You guys are amazing. I really, really appreciate it. If you guys don't have your stuff added, just do exclamation tears and you'll see, just in case it, mm -hmm. yeah, to see what that means. Okay. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> hi. Uh, so, crap, I was going to say something else. So uh, I never hears Morgana. Oh, even though she was in the metaverse, but she didn't speak to Morgana in the metaverse. Yeah, they have to hear Morgana's voice in the meta in yeah. the metaverse in order to hear him in real life. Right, so that's part of, of why role. that's part of why Morgana stays in um, the real world. It's all about the cognition and um, their connection with Morgana. So if you don't connect with mm -hmm. Morgana in the metaverse, you're not gonna like be able to have the same relationship, aka be able to hear him. Right, it's kind of the it's kind of the perception thing. Like you don't know something is there until you see it for the first time, yeah. um, which is kind of. One of my uh, one of my other favorite games does that theme really well, which is uh, Bloodborne has mm -hmm. has these monsters that until you reach a certain level of insight, every time you either fight a boss or like sometimes you get it randomly. But the more you adventure, you gain a stat called insight. Okay. And once you have a certain amount of insight, you can see these monsters that previously were completely invisible because your mind is so they're so horrifying that your mind can't see them and automatically blocks them out <laughs> until you see them for the first time. Oh, that's nice. That's it's a horrifying game. That's. <laughs> <laughs> That's that's this guy right here. That's yeah, yeah. Uh, but anyway, um, it kind of has that same property, but in a less horrifying scenario. Yeah, yeah, that makes sense. That makes sense. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but Akechi heard Morgana and never implied he heard us speaking in the metaverse. Wait, Akechi heard Morgana. That was addressed. That was addressed. Akechi heard Morgana speaking. Uh, oh, that's right. That's oh, right. You said. That's a no, good I think point. Akechi. Akechi may have heard Morgana's voice because uh, even if we never caught the guy in the black mask who ended up being Akechi, he may have been spying on us and monitoring our progress oh, through the true. through the metaverse. That's true. Yeah. So uh, <laughs> hold on one second. Yeah, yeah. So as far as we know, as far as we know, Zibits, but um, I think there's a good chance yeah. he could have heard us. Yeah. Okay. Uh, Fio is uh, <laughs> is begging to be let outside. I don't know if you can hear her. Mm -hmm. uh, so is it okay if we take a break? Um, sure. We're like an hour 40 in. Uh, we definitely have some more stuff to cover. Uh, when I get back, why don't we cover... Um, I'm trying to think of what else we have. Um, um, we, we have the we last just fight. Start the last fight, uh, which we talked about a little bit lightly, uh, and we could keep talking about specific characters, but I think we mostly wrapped up the plot. Yeah, I think um, so too. I don't, but feel free to brainstorm ideas of what we can okay. talk about until I get back. I'll okay. be a few minutes. We'll just wrap up when we get out. back as well. Yeah. Yes. Sounds good. Good luck. Uh, I'm gonna hit the BRB screen. I'll leave your audio on on my stream so you sure. guys can hear. Sure thing. All right, BRB. All right, hey guys, hello. All right, so what are your thoughts, everybody? What's what are your thoughts on all this? I'm trying to see. Do I have any other? Do I have any other notes written down? I think we covered most of my personal notes. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> she's so cute. <coughs> oh, by the way, I have like four girlfriends now. No, never mind. Like eight. Oh yeah, we gotta um. When he gets back, we'll cover the last couple of uh, weeks of the going to jail, coming out, Valentine's Day. We do need to talk about Valentine's Day. Because I don't think either of us got the the um, harem cutscene, but I have seen it, which is, it's hilarious. <laughs> so I don't know. Yeah, just be, okay. Must have hurt us or something. Yeah, he must have hurt us in the metaverse somewhere, for sure. I mean, that's the only way to explain it. I'm sure they would. I'm sure they would agree with that. Yo, Ram, it's okay. Oh my God, I'm glad you're feeling better. Please uh, go to the doctor if you need to, man. Um, Persona Six. I don't know. That would be great. Now that I played five, <laughs> I did, but I did not click on the link, Andy. Um, Morana with two ends. Oh, and then it was uh, the kissing thief. Has nothing to do with kissing. I did see that. That's cool. Um, tell me more about that. <laughs> Mostly you agreed with everything? Sweet. Awesome. Yeah, we, uh, it's funny because Blacklight and I definitely have thoughts that, um, like we both, <laughs> we have, we see life a little differently, uh, but we definitely find moments where we can really connect on certain elements in games, which is cool. And even if we don't, we can very easily understand why the other person feels that way, which is great. Um, so that's why part like the show can be so much fun. Cause it's nice to have uh, 
another individual that has um, some overlapping perspective and some different perspective, but it's all uh, put forth in a way where you can understand each other well and, you know, further a conversation and provide insight, and it's cool. I like it. Persona 4, I will do Persona 4, most likely Persona 4 Golden at some point, but I think we have some other ideas for games coming up soon. Like, maybe Earthbound. <laughs> um, I know we both want to play Nino Kuni at some point. Uh, I want him to play Paper Mario. So expect maybe one of those games next, actually, which would be fine, because I play them all and I love them. <laughs> So I think it's about time to get back to, to one of them at least. Um, that would be awesome. Nice, chill out, what's up? Uh, we're taking a quick, he's taking a quick puppy, puppy break. Mor Mor Morgana the Kissing Bandit was, oh, this lady who ran out on the field and randomly stole the kiss from a baseball player? Oh. Oh, interesting. Hmm. Oh, I saw the Mona Lisa thing. Maybe, maybe. You know. Yeah, oh my god, I'm excited to talk about Valentine's Day. Yeah, because his is going to be a little different from mine since I had Makoto. I will always, always feel bad about <laughs> denying Haru. I want to have Valentine's Day with her. <laughs> She's so cute. Kingdom, Kingdom Hearts 3! Yeah, we got to make um, Blacklight play Kingdom Hearts as well. That's why I was like, oh, sh maybe I should stop talking about Kingdom Hearts plot. Because I think about that a lot. Um, Yo, Kingdom Hearts 3, the Toy Story world looks so good. I'm so glad they're including Pixar. I'm really happy about that. I didn't know how that would work uh, at first. But um, but yeah. The Haru letdown is like the saddest. <laughs> it's like the saddest thing in the game. <laughs> it's not. I mean, it's not. But it kind of is. <laughs> Nino Kuni. It's actually Ni No Kuni, K-U-N-I. So it's N-I, N-O, me, no, Kuni, K-U-N-I. Three words. Um, super, super good game. It's really awesome. It's another uh, beautiful JRPG. It's plots, well, this game has so much to it that I'd say it's almost as interesting. It's like playing a Studio Ghibli film in game form with like really adorable Pokemon-like characters and the music's amazing and looks lovely. I think it'll hold up. I think it'll hold up a time as well. Splatoon 2? Yeah, no, Splatoon 2 will be, I'll probably be doing like a mix of game super goobers. So a lot of days it'll be Splatoon and then I'll switch off with the RPG because I know um, Blacklight also switches off. So that'll actually probably keep us more in line with each other. Since I kept getting ahead with Persona because I continuously played that. Um, getting back into like speed runs or doing like Splatoon online stuff, like squads, and playing with you guys, uh, and potentially learning how to speedrun it, depending on how good it is. Um, that will, that will keep me in check when he has nights where he just wants to play, like, Overwatch, or do his things like that. Nino Kuni, yeah, exactly. Exactly. Keep laughing? I do that a lot. I laugh, I laugh at sad things. It's a, it's a weird emotional reaction. Because it's just like, it, yeah, it, I don't know. The same earbuds? Yo, oh, yeah. I use these um, constantly. These headphones. Um, they work great. I use them for streaming and working out. And they're pretty comfortable and yeah, man. Three more than four? We'll see. Uh, I haven't played Nier yet. Yeah, that is on my list to play eventually. <laughs> Devo, eventually. I giggle at like everything. Sora as a toy. I actually had people, I think Andy, you were actually one of them, talking about how you wanted Donald and Goofy to be other types of toys. I would have loved that. The new RPG, well, the ones, the next one that we'll be playing together. Probably one of the ones that I just mentioned, actually. You laugh when you're embarrassed, yeah. Yeah, I laugh, yeah. It's laughing when you're sad. I do that. <coughs> I laugh about almost everything. I can see people who don't like Haru as a character. Getting back to Persona 5, um, I can totally see people who who don't relate to Haru. I was actually talking with uh, Bloody Biscuits, who's the person who's almost done with this game, um, and thinks the, the the twins are just okay. Um, actually, he's like not a huge fan. 
Um, yo, what's up, Gif? How's it going? But yeah, uh, um, he, he, it was cool to talk to him about how we relate to our favorite ladies in the game, like how he relates. He loves Teacher Maid. He loves Kawakami. That's his waifu. And then I talked about, like, so he talked about her kind of um, view on life and her experience with being math teacher and all that stuff. Um, yeah, so that I think is pretty cool. Uh, how he can, like, relate to that. And then I there are parts about Haru that really speak to me, actually. I don't know, just, like, that she has this, like, beautiful and adorable little innocence. But at the same time, she is really trying hard to learn how to be strong. Like, using what she knows to become, like, a stronger character. I think it's really cool. Hi! Hello! Welcome back. We are just talking Hello, about I'm back. some characters. We talked a little bit about Kingdom Hearts 3 and Nino Kuni. Cool. And, uh, <coughs> and, um, and some Persona 5 characters. Okay. Yeah, Jerns, that's cool. Um, uh, Ranson, I will get that to you when I can. Can you please remind me after this show uh, if, if you would be able to? Yeah. If that's easy for you? Yeah. Um, It'll, it'll, it's pretty hard for me to do it uh, right now. Um, but sure, I'd love to get that info to you. Yeah. Um, so, you, anyway. I don't know if you're talking to me, Silverhawk, but if you are, then I'll check it. Anyway, yeah, Aunt's, Aunt's cool. She's not, yeah, she's not super shallow. She's just, she's, I wouldn't call her a shallow character. I would call her. No. Um, she's. I don't know. It's, I don't want to use the word naive. It's it's like she. I think naive is fair. <laughs> yeah. At least at first. I mean, I don't know if, if she if you're like I I didn't increase her confidence to ten. <laughs> Neither of us got her up to max. I got her up to five. Yeah, so. I, I got her about the same place, five or six. Uh, she just, but like. I think she's just her her layers don't go as deep as some other characters, so she doesn't seem as appealing to rank up. Right, exactly, and that might change if you get her confidant to 10, as it does with a lot of characters, you know, it's definitely... Yeah, but, I mean, even even by rank 5, which is what I got her to, you can start to see mm -hmm. people's perceptions changing. Like, I really, I'm really curious to see True. what happens when you get Yusuke up to rank 10. Because I could see more yeah. of this kind of shift in what he was trying to accomplish. And, like, you can see, so you can see they're all their goals by rank 5. So, like, I saw yeah. Ahn's goals, she wanted to, like, have a stronger heart. But it was, like, something about the, the way she was going about it was, like not it just wasn't drawing me in yeah she, into she that. it's not that she exactly had an easy life but she definitely had a struggle that i personally couldn't relate to she's like oh it's really hard to be me because i'm this new alien pretty girl like i'm yeah. just so pretty everybody's intimidated by me and thinks that i i assumes things about me which has to suck but i, I i've never been in that position in my life <laughs> i have no idea what that's like but you're such so, a pretty girl well thank you i try <laughs> i I liked her, and the more I developed her, I started to like her more and more, but her development didn't, just didn't come as quickly as some of the other characters yeah. that ended up being more yeah. attractive options. Yeah, I can see, and like, I could see a similar perception being made about Haru at first, where she's like, oh, mm -hmm. she's just like this cute little naive rich girl. And right, she just right, has to which... deal with like rich kid problems. But like, a whole freaking business and right, right and after like all these, dad dies and like and all these dudes trying to manipulate her and yeah, i really liked that it turned her. out the one dude was pretty all right you yeah, know yeah i really liked that i liked that as well um, i like that yeah that was actually really nice to see and so it like gave her this kind of like peace of mind but it was also after she found this really like quiet way to show her resolve it was, so it was like this very yeah. subtle way to be like Here's a cup of coffee. She's like, this is how, and it was like very strong, but like a very, very quiet way of strong. You know, like this is how things are gonna be. That's that's Here's hard to a T. Yeah. That's hard to a T. That's part tea. of why I love her. That's part of why. I love yeah, her. she's, she's her her biggest statements happen in her actions and the subtleties where the, within. Uh, it is, she communicates through following her passions. Yeah. Oh no, I was sure that, that sucks. Also gonna rain soon. See you later. Hey, no, no worries, Rancid. Take it easy, man. And uh, just please feel free to remind me. You can drop me a tweet about it or a, a Twitter DM, whatever you need uh, to just remind me to do it after the cast. Yeah, um, I, oh, I agree, Dream Druid. I wish it focused more on her with Shiho than her modeling hobby. Yeah, I agree with that. Um, yeah, yeah, no, definitely. And uh, maybe they develop more of that later on. I don't know. But um, that was definitely where we like Anne. She's, she's, you know, a worried, attentive friend yeah. whose friend had gone through something horrible. Um, yeah. That's definitely an easy way to get to like a character, but yeah, when she's sure. the and model, like, like, maybe this. 
Maybe it, like, that's unfair, but... It, like, lets up a bit. Yeah, but it's, like, it just shows that she's kind of naive to the way that some people manipulate. And it's, like, that's... Yeah. It's cool when you learn that, but it, 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 it shows other people's layered manipulative intentions and not your depth. <laughs> yeah, sure. Yeah, it shows definitely. that you do not get it. <laughs> that That's that's a really good point, actually. Yeah. <laughs> hey, Ransom, thank you so much for the... Uh, I think that's ah, actually our tier first two. ever Tier 2 sub. That's awesome. Ransom, thank you so much for the Tier 2 sub. I promise we'll have some Tier 2 and Tier 3 emotes soon, but I really appreciate the 10 bucks, man. Thank you so much for the new sub. And guys, put a little bit of hype in the okay. channel, please. Yay! Get some hype. That's huge. That's huge. It's our first ever Tier 2 sub. That's awesome. Thank you, man. That's awesome. Bless it up. Bless it up. Yo, Iris, that's nice. You just finished it. Yeah, it's... It's, this game is like top notch, I, man. Top notch. It's amazing, man. I, I like. I, I'm sure Irish agrees. I am recommending this to everyone who plays JRPGs. Anyone who doesn't mind a good long game, this yeah. is a game to play. Yeah, hundred percent. For sure. For sure. Um, it was so much fun. Um, okay, so oh, yeah. okay, so I have I have like two more big things that I could think of to talk about. One of them is sure. the last fight. Music, so good. Bomb. <laughs> amazing. So yeah. Good. Um. Yeah, I thought that fight was really, it was really nice. It was a really cool fight. I mean, it's, I mean, it's very final bossy. You're like, this is final boss. Like it was, I mean, This is the last guy. Yeah, I mean, in a very obvious way, but it wasn't bad, you know? It was totally cool. Yep. Um, and, and again, just to harp on it, this isn't a case of Japanese teenagers get together and kill a god. Um, it, that is the case, sure, but it's not the typical scenario where this dude comes out of nowhere. He's never really been an enemy. He's like some weird metaphor from another dimension. He's manipulating that like comes everything the whole time. Right, exactly. <laughs> but cool. this is the first we've heard about him. Like maybe this is the first we've heard about him, sure. But like this is basically just a manifestation of the evils of men. This is yeah. just an, the embodiment of the corruption of men, which is exactly what we've been combating the entire yeah, time. Yeah, which is interesting because it's made to look like an, a, a holy figure. Right, exactly, it's exactly. Like that's it's how they're that, like exactly. masking it up. Like, we will take care of everything for you. It's like it's like a right. god version of what Shido was trying to do. He's that golden idol, right? Yeah. He's he's the false idol for them to worship. For sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Where she asked you to be mean to her. Yeah, that was pretty funny. Though. Yeah, Donnie. Ransom, that that's completely huh. fine. Go for it, man. Yeah. Um. So. Uh, yeah. So I thought I thought that was really cool. And then it's like, I don't know. It's. It was really funny to be like, we're gonna kill a god with like Satan, and everybody's gonna like it. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> That's not usually it's, the message you get, but it was. It our was sin comes like, back; it turns into Satan. My boy. <laughs> <laughs> that had to be He's rewarding. My boy. It was so rewarding for me. My boy. I was jealous. I was boy. jealous in that moment. Mm -hmm. That you didn't uh, have him still in your party, being a badass. Because. <laughs> yeah, no. He was long gone. I was really I actually, happy I, about that. I actually did not fuse any of the ultimate personas. Not once. Uh, I got Alice. They get Alice. Okay, I've heard they're all super badass. Did you know? Do you know the ultimate um, instant curse move? No, not exactly. No, I don't think so. It's I, I never really used the insta kills. It's die called, for me. Die okay. for me! Exclamation point! And when That's she amazing. does it, she just like she just she, okay. Whenever you use Alice, it's like this tiny, cute little Alice, right? Like Alice in Wonderland, Alice. Yeah. It's like a cute, oh, tiny cool. little Alice who just stands next to you. And whenever, whenever you use her, she just goes. Like that, and then like her, her move happens. She just points at something. It's That's adorable. badass. Um, and then die for Who's... me. It's like all these like teddy bears appear on screen and just run into that... the bad guy. It's teddy so... bears are terrifying in this game. It can be. Did you ever oh, get yeah. bugs? No, I did not like bugs. Yeah, bugs is a, is a teddy bear stuffed well, with human skulls. Yeah, That's he's terrifying. Supposed to be like the boogeyman. Right? I think yeah, I think he's about the boogeyman. Yeah. He's just about the boogeyman. Yeah. If not exactly yeah. that. Alice was great. So I so that was my I think that was the only final one that I that I fused. Um mm -hmm. Yeah, no, I really wanted her. I just some about it. I really wanted her. Even though I didn't need her. She was really cool to have. She was helpful in a, in some fights actually. And then I got uh Arsene up to like Okay. high level, man. I don't know. Some sort of high level. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Um I I have no idea oh, who, yeah, were, who were like my guy. ultimates. I, just, I guess because I didn't really have any attachments to them, I just kind of fused into the most to the fruit, powerful yeah. stuff. Sorry, thank you so much, Martin, for the sub. I really appreciate it. That's good. I will say more thank yous after the after the um, talk show is over. But I appreciate that. Um, so say the last thing you were saying for me. <laughs> uh, I, oh, 
I, I didn't really fuse anything ultimate. I can't even okay. remember what my personas were lined up as at the end. I know I fused okay. a couple of really powerful ones. They got me through just fine. Like I said, zero issues with the final boss. Yeah. Um, but uh, I was a little bit jealous. I didn't like kind of take a persona and stick with it. For me, I was just too addicted to the whole fusing and right. resummoning and sense. doing all, all the, all the, I'm very much a min maxer. You know what I mean? Yeah. Not, not to the point that I'll research it, but like I like to try to min max on the fly. And yeah. this game is great for letting you do that. Yeah, it's cool. Yeah, once I started to figure that out, it was fun. Um, but I was like, yo, my boy, my boy, Arsene, he's my boy. He was my boy. I worked really hard. Oh, I also got Black Frost. Awesome. Black Frost is so badass. Black oh, I didn't see him. I only got <laughs> King Frost. Black Frost is like the ultimate frost right yeah. like if you fuse all of the yeah. all the frosts you fight together a version of him early on in mementos for like when you're do you yeah for one of the side quests you can fight a version of him but um fusing him yourself he's so freaking good yeah i use, his, oh, he, I use him a he lot. looks he kind of looks like how i figured he should yeah it was like <laughs> it's like the description is like a jack frost who realizes that he was actually a demon <laughs> Cool. And you're like, yeah, <laughs> sure. let's go. He looks like a demon, man. He's got yeah. those pointy fangs and everything. Yeah. Um, no, that's cool. That's cool. Yeah, no, he was a good, he was a really good persona to have. Um, yeah, so I used him, Alice, and uh, and Arsene a decent amount. And then I think there are a couple others. <clears throat> I used. Mm, yeah. I, I, I fused like one angel dude, and I had, I had wronged up for a really long time. I had like three of the angels. They were all super good. Yeah, they're all pretty good. They're all pretty good. They were all solid personas. Yeah. Um, so overall, I think I don't know if you want to talk about this. At, and, sorry. Hopefully <laughs> okay, she stops in a minute. Um, she's being very needy. This is why I stopped streaming with her in my room. She yeah. really, yeah. Listen to my bark. I figured out my voice. Now it's time to make it your problem. It's okay. I grew up with a lab as well, and uh, I get it. <laughs> They, they really they're like to barky. Talk. Yeah. She's yes, yeah, she's very talkative, very talkative. <laughs> yeah. She's also she's also got the pit bull grumblies. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, what's so what's up? One of the things I really wanted to talk about was just Go ahead. Overall core themes. Overall core themes. Okay. Um and it's uh, it's obviously been a, a major focus for me throughout our talks. Um mm -hmm. but it's one of my favorite things to talk about in a game. Um and I think Ultimately, I really think that the core themes and the lessons that this game set out to impart. <laughs> hush, baby, uh -huh. hush. I, I, I think they legitimately helped me in my life. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Yeah. I, I think yeah. that this told me some very basic but pro yet profound things that uh, yeah. that in adulthood you tend to forget. I agree. You know, I agree with that. Uh, I mean, it's just it's good reminders. I mean, yeah, there's some dark circumstances and things that you may not necessarily be able to relate to, but um, there's definitely a lot of little nuggets in there where you're like, oh yeah, yeah, that's yeah. So good for you, I agree, I'm gonna do that I, too. <laughs> you know? I think my number one lesson was, one, uh, in tying into how they painted Rebellion and how Rebellion was generally a good thing, yeah. if not, not always a good thing, but generally a good thing, um, stand up to the powerful and the tyrannous. Uh, I think that there were some fantastic lessons about how your true self can only come out, your your truest and most powerful self can only come out when you take off the mask and stop lying to yourself. Yeah, absolutely. And, I love right, that. Right, and, st and stop going along with what everybody knows about you or so they think. Stop going along with, with people's perceptions and just live the way that you want to live and, and embody your truest self. Yeah. That's when you're at your most powerful is when you're, is almost when you're when you're just alone. Yeah. Um, and uh, leading on to that too is the idea that a rebellion is very often met with resistance and hearsay and and <laughs> nasty rumors that are that are designed to undercut you. Um, so oftentimes the true rebels and the true heroes are generally vilified, yeah. and those are the people that we're looking to befriend, not the yeah. super popular kids, not right. the not the people who have positions of power, and the, the people who are on the fringes, the people who have already been cast out, the yeah. the discounted politician, the former government official who started an unsuccessful business, the yeah. back alley doctor. Those are our allies, and those are the people who we really care about. Those yeah. are the ones who really matter. Because, I think that was really brilliant. Yeah, Beautiful. because in each circumstance, they've all done something to try to stay true to who they are 
Right, exactly. Yeah. Or even and, if they've, and, like, fucked up, which a lot of them have. Like, they're all, like, on this path to being, like, I'm just gonna be myself from here on out and right. show how I can grow or, like... I don't know. And always it's because they're fed up with with the way things are going in normal, regular society. Yeah. You know, it's it's just simply I've been pushed to this limit. And now it's it's just I'm going to have to say sorry to all that. I'm not about it. I'm going to go go off on my own path. And that is when you discover your true yeah, strength is when you're great. completely alienated. Yeah. Yeah. You know, I think it's awesome. That, I think that was that was a really, really, a uh, really beautiful uh, metaphor. That stuck um, with you. Yes, big yeah. time, big yeah. time. And you know what? A lot of the themes did seem pretty aimed at a Japanese culture slingshot. I, you know, especially as a very rigid culture and a very like you know very much based around societal norms. They're very very huge on that. Yeah. But as an American, as and we're like supposedly the ones that are all about like rebellion and freedom. Th this was still extremely relevant to us. Yeah. Like if we think we're we're any better or any more free, like we're just lying to ourselves. Yeah. That this is a universal lesson, yeah, I think. For sure, especially when it comes to the whole society kind of giving up and going with the flow thing <laughs> that seems so exactly <laughs> exactly that you see that happen all the time it's yeah. it's when it's only when those fake friends or those those acquaintances or those you know those people it's when they turn their back on you yeah. that you can kind of get a clearer view of all right well screw them and what they want what do i want yeah for and sure. that's how you find yourself yeah i agree right? with that, man i agree that's when your persona comes out. Yeah! And I think everybody should remember that. Yeah, you Just can remember that. off your mask and your face spurts out blood. And then you get a persona and everything's good. Yeah. And it hurts a little bit, but it heals back. It's, it's all fine. right. It's fine. You can keep the mask on so that they don't mess with you. Sure. Put the mask on in front of those people, but your friends know who you are. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Your friends know who you are. In the moment As long as you know who you are. Yeah. Absolutely. I yeah. agree. Do you want to... Um, do you want to take a moment and talk about uh, Valentine's Day? <laughs> We need to do that. I need to be reminded. What I keep seeing Valentine's Day coming up. What happened there? Uh, so Valentine's Day. It's this is after you're done being final boss, and you. It's all cutscenes. You know, you go to jail, you get out of jail, and then mm. no wait, or maybe right before. It's right before or right after you go to jail. Somewhere around there, right? Yeah. No, you go to jail. You go to jail on Christmas. Yay. Um, so it's after. Yeah. You, okay. So it's after. It's after you get out. Um, yeah. So you, you girl. Um, or multiple girls text you depending on who you've wife food oh. and ask if you want to hang out and do uh, you don't know what happens huh. so so um, kind of your last time right it's, yeah. it's like your last date so I'm sure right, Takemi right. texted you and was like yo let's hang and out she on the day and then Makoto came over for me and gave me chocolates and and then like you sit together and she said all this cute stuff and was like asking about the future and um, it was very sweet so it's like a nice little cool. moment nice little like last kind of coupley moment. Um, between sure, the two of sure. you. Um, yeah, do you know, uh, do you know what happens when you have multiple? <laughs> no, is I that guess? when things finally come crashing down? Do you want to know? Yeah, I do. Okay, I do. So what happens is um, if you fly food more than one person, uh, apparently at some point they all get there at the same time. <laughs> of course they do. It's bound to come at you eventually, right? And they figure it out, and then they beat the crap out of you. <laughs> Good. Good. And so I'm glad Jiro, that you get something. And so Jiro scolds you. It's really funny. That's awesome. Yeah. That's great. I like. I like that they at least. I like that they leave you the freedom of choice to do that, and that you get some kind of consequence. Yeah. Oh yeah. I like that too. Yeah. I think it's really funny. It's Even though great. I would say overall, I enjoyed, you know, the waifuing and, and the dating aspects, but overall felt a little bit tacked on. It didn't really, yeah, eat, yeah. Like, you know. I agree. Uh, um, but yeah, no, what Demo yeah. said. Also, you can uh, ignore hanging out with any of the girls and just hang out with um, Ryuji. Instead. Romantic. Yeah. If you're a true romantic, yeah. You can really hang, hang out with, with your bro. bro. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, exactly. He's, he's not hanging out with anybody. Right. Um, hang with your bro. A fanfic? I don't, I don't I'm not really into fan fiction, to be honest. Um, it's it's not just not really my thing. Thank you though. <laughs> bro Jiro's music. Bro Jiro. The true Bro Jiro. He yeah. is a bro. Um so yeah, it's 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 I like that that it, it at least keeps you it tries to keep you honest at least. It gives yeah, you the option, but Yeah. It, it persuades you to be like, uh oh, you're already you're already doing this thing. Sub Yo, thank you, yeah. Yeah. Irish for the Yo, Irish runner. Fruit basket. Um, can I say it? Welcome to the fruit basket. Oh yeah. 
Oh, yeah. that's good. So that's good stuff. I didn't, <laughs> I, didn't, I didn't wait for an answer. I just went for it. <laughs> that's uh, okay. Don't worry, dude. Uh, yeah, so I don't know. Was there anything else about the game? That's uh, that's kind of. Uh, well. That's definitely what I took from it. He um, he yeah, but, uh goes to I don't know. He just he he goes in jail. Comes out of jail, and then you have Valentine's go- Day, and then you have the nostalgic moments with Sojo, and then your friends take you on a road trip. Oh, and Morgana comes back, and much. everybody's mad at him, and then it's fine. <laughs> Yeah, everybody gets yeah. gets real mad at it. He's still fighting with Ryuji. Like nobody's learned their lesson there. <laughs> yeah. Well, it's just kind of great. It's the, it's kind of nice to have that actually. Yeah, the ending was long, but like everything in the game is really long. So I felt yeah. like they took they did a good it's, job it's just taking their time and wrapping it up. If they had up. rushed it, that would have been kind of a bummer. I was expecting a long ending. Um, yeah. So I think it I think it went pretty well. Yeah. Hold on, hold on one sec. I'm sorry. She won't stop pawn at something. That's okay. Don't worry. Yeah, man. I think we'll be wrapping up uh, in a minute anyway. Um, seems okay. like we've covered a lot of good, a lot of good uh, content. Oh yeah, it gives our tears back. Yeah. Oh man, I gotta say, still one of my best, my, one of my favorite lines from the game overall is when you're sitting in the diner with Futaba, and then um, Mishima walks up, and you have that conversation, and <laughs> and then she's just like calls him an NPC, and you just go savage. It's so funny. Oh, he gets called an NPC? Mishima. That's right. Yes. Yeah, that's right. So funny. Oh, my God. So Futaba funny. is such a savage. I love her. She is. I just love that, like, um, my reaction to that was <laughs> savage. And then the game gives you the three <laughs> options for what to say, and one of them was literally sa- savage. And I was like, savage. Perfect. Oh, my God. Poor Mishima. I know. <laughs> I think. I- I do agree, man. I, I really like that it, it gave you the opportunity to say bye to your friends. It left us on, oh, yeah. n- not on the idea that this was goodbye, but this on the idea that we're gonna have one more adventure and we're gonna keep helping people. Yeah, well also before, uh, when you're allowed to go around the city and find everybody, did you do that? And see all of your yes. next confidants? Yes. Cause you get I don't, a ton I'm of crap. Trying to, I'm trying to remember what happened there. They give you they, a they, ton they, of they, items. They give you those gifts that apparently affect New Game. New Game Plus, yeah. Yeah, yeah it makes like, uh, everything plus. easier in New Game Plus, which is really cool. Right, um, right. Which is really cool. Which I just said that. I think, <laughs> I think it may. I think it makes it like maxes their confidant rank essentially uh, yeah. for the second playthrough. Yeah. Um, something like that. Something I know. It Makoto, affects your relationship with them. Makoto gave me a watch that like signified our relationship. We all set on the game. Yeah. To the fruit basket. That's weird. Um, <laughs> I really appreciate it. I'll say more thank yous uh, after after we're done. But um. Yeah, I don't know. I really liked. I liked the opportunity to go find everybody, and I'm glad chat was like, "Yo, real quick, Fufu, you should go make sure you find everybody." <laughs> make sure you go do that. Then yeah. He maxed out, and I was like, "Oh, okay." <laughs> yeah. No, that was really cool. It reminds me it of was... another kind of end game thing, but. Yep. I don't know. Oh, okay. Something I haven't sure. played. I, I'm not. Sh- I don't remember. I don't know if you played it. So. Chrono Trigger. No. Oh, that's nah. a thing too. I don't remember if you get a moment like that. Well, I gotta replay whatever. it. I it once. Yeah. I'm sure. I'm sure we'll get to it. Anyway. Um. um yeah. I feel like that's kind of kind of my final thoughts on the game. Is this is a highly inspiring game, incredibly yeah. well done. Yeah. Um, and it, it, it will honestly offer you lessons in your life that I like. I legitimately wish I grew up with this game. I wish <laughs> I had this game when I was a kid. It could have told me so many things that I didn't figure out until I was an adult. Yeah. You know, and things that I had forgotten I know, as right? an adult. Yeah, for sure. You know, just. At least it's a good reminder now. It really is. Yeah, I'll always take a reminder now. I'm really glad that I played this. I think probably I think I think it'd be even even higher than Final Fantasy seven in quality. Absolutely. Uh, Nothing will ever replace those memories I have with seven. But yeah, nostalgia is strong. Yeah, nostalgia is very strong. It it was a formative experience. But that being said, I think Persona five might be just about my favorite JRPG of all time. That's cool. Wow. That's a strong wow. endorsement. That is really strong impression. Dang. You, yeah, you, it's you know how hard there. I am to impress. Yeah. You know, yes. it's... <laughs> yeah, it's definitely in there with top games for me. I mean, it's definitely it's my it's my favorite RPG this year. Um, yes. I also yes. loved the crap out of Hollow Knight, and I really loved Breath of the Wild. So like, those are I, my top three games yeah. this year. Yeah, um, I think overall. I'm up for Hollow Knight next. I have some time until we start our next game. Do so. it! I also have some yeah, ideas for our next, next game. And I know that like I'll also be playing Splatoon 2, so I won't be playing my casual RPG or whatever as fast. 
as normal. So I know you, sure, can, yeah. you can kind of break it up on your end too. That'd so be good. We can That'd be actually good. like stay on par with each other this yeah. time. <laughs> Cause I'll be playing a lot um, So yeah, I think I think that'll be good uh, for whatever, whatever comes next guys, which we've been talking about and we have a couple of ideas. I mentioned mm -hmm. a few things in chat earlier, but we'll really nail game down uh, probably within the next couple days or next week, I would say. Yes. And um, so by the next time we start, maybe we'll have uh, start of the next game. That would probably Definitely. Be nice. I know we'll be sure. And I know we'll be talking. I get asked about SideQuest Cafe pretty often. I'm sure we'll be talking about it in our regular streams. Yeah until then and we'll yeah. definitely be announcing on twitter like when we've se selected our yeah. next game and you should, know if there's gonna be anybody yeah. joining us right exactly yeah because yeah, right. we kind of want to feature some uh, some hot fresh new members or like guests yeah. some some guest episodes and stuff yes you know, cool. definitely been a goal of ours since the beginning and yeah. we've said so we, we'd like to get other jrpg players other people yeah. who appreciate the genre yeah, in exactly. on 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 the project for yeah. sure so we may have been talking uh, to a few people Absolutely. And De Devo, I agree. Persona 5 did definitely shake the JRP, JRPG sphere. I think, that's, I just, you know. I just hope some people take some elements from this game into consideration for when they're doing stuff. Like, don't copy stuff from this game, but just take um, the amount of effort they placed into certain areas of this game. Like the UI, definitely. or the character development, or uh, not being afraid to, to take a game a little deeper, you know? Right. Don't be afraid to be dark. Don't forget to actually wrap up your plot. Yeah. You know, don't yeah, just yeah. write a bunch of nonsense. Like, I feel, yeah. I feel like... Write in every the... single thing for a reason. Don't just write it in because it yes. seems convenient. Thing, things need to be... Things need pancakes. to have... A, people and characters and developments... Pancakes. That's, yes, exactly. That's a perfect example. Literally and Elements, one. characters, they have to have a purpose. They can't just be there to, to be meeting some criteria that yeah. you need for your game. Some yeah. uh, some cliche that you have to make sure you, you shoehorn in somehow. Yeah. yeah. Um, that, I'm so sick of, of being explained, of having it explained to me that that's just the way JRPGs are. Yeah. Why? Yeah. Why are yeah. they just shitty sometimes? You always need an answer for something you're going to use. Always use it, like yeah. have an answer for, for the exactly. tool, the character, the plot, the the style, to the Think, item. Things anything. are done with purpose. Yeah. Yeah. And and you create a very powerful game in doing so. Yeah. Um, for sure. So I hope you guys, if you haven't played it yourself, I hope you will. Uh, if you're digging this game, if you're loving it, then you're, then you're definitely on the same page as us. We yeah. love this game. We had a great time with it. Yeah, I'm really, really glad did. that we kind of randomly decided. I was like, yo, Persona 5? And you're like, all right, let's go. And okay, then, okay. Yeah, and then I'm pretty, I was, yeah, really I glad. wasn't sure what to expect going in, yeah. but oh my God. This is the my second socks. game this year that I've decided to play almost on a whim. And I'm so glad I did, because the other one was Hollow Knight. Nice. Uh, yeah, and I'm I'm kind of in the same boat, so starting happy. with Hollow Knight. So yeah. I'm hoping that blows, blows me away too. I will watch the crap out of that when I am not live good. or sleeping. <laughs> good, good. Look forward yeah. to seeing you in there. Yeah. Um, so anyway, is that going to do it for episode 10? I think so. I think so, man. Yo, guys, I really appreciate so. you hanging out with us once again <laughs> Thank for you another guys. episode. I know uh, I will be starting Sly 4. Thieves in time after this. What are you cool. doing after this? Cool. Uh, I think it's going to be Hollow Knight. Um, if not, it'll probably be PUBG, but... We'll okay. see if Hollow Knight's working, oh, yeah. and it, I, I like never test stuff before I try to do it live. Yeah. So we'll see if we'll see if it's agreeing. You know, no, I'm sure if, it won't be too hard. If it does, guys, I mean, PUBG is cool, and uh, but Hollow Knight, oh, so good. So um, <laughs> I would recommend. Can I recommend something to you about Hollow Knight? Yeah, yeah, um, absolutely. Stick with it. Uh, hundred percent it. Hundred percent. Okay, sounds yeah. good. That's, that's kind of my default goal going in. Yeah, um, yeah. Do you know about sure. the ending at all? Anything? Nope. You don't nothing know anything? about it. Um, I barely know anything about it aside it's uh, you know Castlevania, Metroidvania like. Hundred percent it. <laughs> okay. There may be sure. some differences. Okay. Okay. All right. I, that's all. Will do. Say. Yeah. Just yeah. It's yeah. thank. You. <laughs> it's beautiful. It's a beautiful game in a different way to this. Um, like all the two D sure. animation is fantastic, and yeah. uh, the music yeah. I've is seen it. lovely. Um, that, I haven't heard almost any of yeah. the music yet. I'm pretty excited because yeah, I've heard that and the then, soundtrack is fantastic. Yeah. And the lore is like also buried within there. Like if you like digging up lore mm. like you do in Dark Souls games, you're going to love this because the lore is like I dug do. in there. So just like inspect everything you can. It's cool. Oh man, I want it's a great. body video explaining explaining the entire plot, please. Yeah. That's all I want. Yeah. Um, well, anyway, thank you guys so much for watching and thank you so much for keeping up with us through our Persona 5 playthrough. Yeah, I uh, agree. We're, like we said, we're starting our next game soon. Stay tuned to, uh, to hear us announce what it ends up being. Yeah. Because um, we're still not sure ourselves, but whatever <laughs> it is, I'm sure it's going to be awesome. We decide on the fly. It's all good, guys. We really, it's the streamer life. You kind of play life by the ear. You really do. Uh, 
kind of play it by ear. Yeah, guys, so. but this has been super fun. Thanks for chatting with me once again, Mr. Blacklight. Thank you, Fufu. Thank you, I'll see you next time. <laughs> I'm right, sure man. we'll talk in between then a lot. Yeah, of but course. But have a great rest of your cast. Okay. All right, man. We'll Bye, talk Prince. to you soon. Bye. Bye, everybody. See you later. Bye, Fufu's chat. Oh, I'll leave you with that on my way out. Bye. Oh, I just can't Bye. wait to research. Oh, to the fruit bed.